start. So we should call a meeting to order. Um, are you here for the personnel stuff? Or yeah, just a yeah, public, yeah. public comment? Okay. Yeah, public Is John, we're waiting for John. John's supposed to um, click in. He has not come in yet. Sharon's coming. She'll be, she'll be here. Yeah. Katie and I are sharing hosting duties so she can monitor the uh, waiting room as well and admit okay. people as needed. Orca is joining us um, by Zoom, so we won't need to do a formal recording to the cloud. Okay. Now, in the nights when they're actually here with the camera, we will probably need to do a, a cloud recording simultaneously because then they can merge the two to get uh, the full meeting okay. experience on camera. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Hyde is in the waiting room mm -hmm. and joined us yet. So if Orp is recording and they're not here, we don't have to record. Right. But if they're here, recording and need to record. Right, because the cameraman or camera person would be able to record yeah. who's in pan around here, but won't get a very good resolution when they pan the camera to the screen. Okay. So what they do in their magic orca lab is they take the two videos and make a composite of them together, the Zoom fed video along with the recording that they made live. So when we're recording on Zoom, does it record only voices or does it record? No, it records people. Yeah. People. Oh, okay. and typically it'll focus on whoever's speaking and instead okay. of showing the, the gallery view that we're looking at now, it'll just show one person, whoever the dominant huh. person speaking is. Okay. They can't tie tie pick up on the hour that I take it, right? The video feed from that. So um, yeah. Because that's the primary camera and it will pivot around whoever's speaking, that's what Zoom will record. So Zoom, so there will be a yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have an owl and we have orca. Mm -hmm. He is in. Okay. All kinds of species. And then Barbara is with us as well. Oh, hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. So we have to we should get started because it's yeah, now five still, after. We've got, um, we got a lot to do. So we can either go into executive session or not because personnel matters. We can go into executive session. We didn't the last time we talked about some personnel right. issues. And I don't see why we should. But there's anything that we really need to go into executive session for. Yeah, no, this good. Point. We're keeping it open as so much as we can. It's not yep. about talking about things like that. Yeah, we just want to make sure we're not using like names, mm -hmm. um, that kind of stuff, so that it some you know some privacy is still there. So we talked last meeting about the increases. Probably John coming on board. They are muted. iPad user, would you please unmute and identify yourself for the record? Maybe it work. Sometimes when John has come on, he's had to close out and come back. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah. I think it said Sharon. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Exactly. Katie, maybe you could send iPad a chat. Gotta love her and her home. <laughs> Kind of like it, I kind of like this myself. <laughs> this is more my team. <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty handy though. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hi there, are you here? Good. It's uh, our presses here tonight. Oh, okay. Is that who I have was? Yes. Hi, David. Thank you for identifying yourself. <clears throat> Reading, Sharon. Say hello to Al. 
We have owl, we have an owl, and we have orca. Uh, yeah, Rick told me that there was an owl training at 5 30. He's not, he didn't train us today. We're just, he's trying to hook it up and we'll do a train just, a different we're day. We're working on the We'll see if it works. Get a vowel that works first. Okay. <clears throat> just getting things to work technology wise. Mm -hmm. we're using. He's going to train us all. This off. is badly chosen. Yeah, do you want to sit at home? Yeah. <laughs> John said, we guys in sun. John's going to be on by um, Zoom. Oh, perfect. And I can look at Doug and make faces at him. Yep. <coughs> so we had just called the meeting to order, John. Okay. <coughs> and we talked about the staff salary increases. Already, you did? No, I'm just yeah, over just Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. That was yeah. quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we had budgeted for 2.1 across the board for all staff. Um, so the select board needs to vote to approve those salary increases unless there's another option somebody would, would like to put forward. We have to. So we should take a motion and then go to the discussion. Yeah. So I'll make that motion to to approve the one point or two point one as as was budgeted in the last fiscal. I'll second that. Discussion. Uh, for the record, um, does anyone recall how we arrived at the two point one? Because yes, Sharon, is absolutely. It was CPI plus, for the record, please. CPI plus. Um, yeah. So to yeah, for the record, let's go right into the, yeah. the detail. So this is how we've budgeted, and I'm going to keep saying budgeted. Um, how we've budgeted the pot of money for budget uh, performance increases or for merit for salary increases. How we have budgeted for salary increases. Um, we started two cycles ago with using the Northeast Region CPI selected uh, um, pulled from end of the previous fiscal year, so June 30th. Um, and then we applied, so that was, I, I won't get into the numbers, plus 0.75%. This is as a methodology, recognizing that if that had taken us over 3%, we would cap at 3%. That's right. what we said. And that's how we budgeted two cycles ago. And then this past year, when we were budgeting in January, we said, well, hang on, now that we have a method, um, let's instead of June of the previous year, we can go right to uh, yeah, November, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was, hang on, I did put it in here somewhere. Um, it, we grabbed January. We took the end of January. Um, so it's a rolling 12 month CPI for the Northeast as determined by the US Department of Labor. And we took it from the end of January, recognizing that once we've locked into a method, that's now it just becomes every year when we're budgeting, we can say, okay, there's the number at the end of January. It's available by the what, first week of February. And then and then add our I thought we were looking at the end of November or December. Nope. I looked I I, I nope, I went back in and looked at the numbers. Okay. So the it was January. Uh, 2021 that had a Northeast CPI of 1.1%. And then we applied instead of 0.75, we said, well, let's apply 1% instead. So we've tweaked our method a little bit. Um, and I, I, you know, being a big fan of consistency and methodology, I hope that we can lock in that that's our method for budgeting, that we grab the January 
um, rolling 12 month number. We add 1% if that makes us happier than 0.75, unless 1% takes us over 3%. And then we would cap at 3% for the budget because that's where we want to walk in for the taxpayers. So that was our method. Um, and then the January CPI then is probably the last one we can possibly look at. Yeah. That's, right. that, well, that's kind right. of before that's we I mean. submit budget. Well, that's why I know it wasn't January because we have to have. Budget, budget stuff done before the end of January. I went, when I sent this out to you guys, uh, uh, what, 10, 10 days ago, I went out and looked at it. And, it, and the only number that's 1.1 was January. 1.1 for January, and then we added 1%. I mean, we can go back and say it's December, um, but that is not what we did this year. Well, the Based well, on the numbers, because I had to back into it, because we did that in executive session. We didn't have any. Yeah, but well, what I'm saying is, I know that because we have to have all of our stuff wrapped up before the end of January, budget wise and town report rise. I know we didn't, I know it wasn't January, but it doesn't I mean it doesn't matter. We have a methodology in place. Well, if it wasn't January, I don't know how we got to 2.1 because 1.1 was January. But, but, um, all right, well, this is good. So if the last number we can grab is December. And I'm going to make notes that that's got to be our method. And and I don't know what we did this year because it doesn't match the numbers that are out there. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look, but I know I have it written down somewhere how we came to that. There was a chart, I remember. Absolutely. And the, the chart. The, the CPI chart. Yep, the CPI chart. And, aren't we, and we're using the Northeast region CPI, yep. right? Yep. And that was 1.1 1 .1 in January. Yeah. Anyways, I mean, we came to what we came to with a good, strong way of doing it to be consistent going forward. Um, I know that there's other places now because of all the COVID stuff and trying to keep good employees and things, they're giving a higher percentage salary increase. We didn't budget for that. Right. For instance, we didn't budget for a 3% or anything, we budgeted for 2.1. 2 .1. 2 .1. Yep. I think that, that goes into uh, the question is, I mean, there are three things going on. I mean, I see if we got, you know, this is our budgeted raise and then we have potential market adjustments that we've got to do if we're competing in a market and we're not competitive, then we have to make a market adjustment. That's a one-time thing. You know, to, to bring it up to where we can, yeah. But we have to look at all those benefits across because we have higher benefits than some towns and, and even with others. So that's a package. Mm -hmm. So you look at that, it's not all just, you know, how we make it. Yeah. So, it's, so, so I think tonight we need to decide if we're going to go with what we put in the budget, which is the 2.1, right? And then we can talk about. Some COVID relief bonuses, which we can use COVID yeah, money yeah. for, mm -hmm. um, and you know, give everybody a nice bonus, and then that doesn't lock us into a higher percentage salary increase going forward. You don't want to give it like the three percent now, and then next year things change, and you have to give a lot less. Right. It's, well, it's where we have. I think that gives that gives us some time too to figure out. What that market adjustment should actually be. Mm -hmm. Market's in flux right now, anyway. So it's about big time. Yeah, I mean, we know inflation's high right now, but that's probably short lived. Yeah, I think it's probably short term. Yeah, so, well, and we also we also need you know we also need to think about the taxpayers. You know how much can they absorb? Right. Mm -hmm. What we might want to consider is. Um, If, we're, if we think we might need to make market adjustments, um, meaning, you know, change, change the numbers so that we are more or less in line with other towns, we have to, we have work to do, what other towns, you know, yeah. I mean, and lock that in just as systematically, here's our market basket. But I would say, and this, I know we're getting ahead of this, but just to put this pin in, um, that budget, a market adjustment budget, should be conceptually a different budget, and even on paper, a different budget mm -hmm. than an increased budget, because 
and this is the second point I want to make because we have this pattern in CALIS of allocating the entire increased budget equally to every person in the team. So I wouldn't be surprised if what we're going to do tonight is give everybody a 2.1% increase because that's what we budgeted. And what we're not doing when we do that is, <coughs> is going into executive session and considering right. performance of performance and using that budget as a merit um, you know, a merit increase mm -hmm. rather than just everybody gets the same thing. So that's my second comment is every year I've said this, I hope that we can find bandwidth to, to it, this is good. The fact that we even have a system is great. Um, and, you know, deepening, deepening <clears throat> the, the, the systematicness, is that a word? Systematic. It's a systematic mess, Katie. <laughs> so, to, to, so we can move on and get some of this other stuff done. Um, there's a motion on the table to give all employees the 2.1 salary increase as we determined and put in the budget. And there was a second. Um, yes. And it would be good to get this. Um, have you considered the? Uh, we're talking about that. That's right. where you got to balance. Yeah. Right. And we're yeah. going to yeah. talk about that. We got to balance the benefits, insurance benefits, and push maybe. Yeah. We do. And that, the same time. That's where you do the market. If we yeah. do a market adjustment, it's, yeah. that's all the outcomes. You know, I have people raised by what they do. Mm -hmm. You know what they do. I mean, okay. I can give you all kinds of examples. Right. We got to move on. Um, okay. Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're make, you make a good point, and we, we are looking at that. And we'll yeah. look at it here tonight, too. Yeah. Right. That's what so, well, I, 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 I think we're coming and taking a talk. I'm not going to let you talk. We let, we're letting you talk, though. We just have no, to. No, you want me to move on. We want no, to move no. on to voting on the motion. I'm going to say that I will vote for this, but but I, I don't like that we aren't considering. Um, merit when we make increases. But we, we don't have that. We, yeah, we don't have the time right now. We don't have the time because we keep getting ourselves into a position where we, mm -hmm. we haven't spent the time and we haven't built a culture and an expectation that we're going to shift it. That's why I want to say it out loud when we're on the record. So there's, you know, some awareness that there's other ways to do things. And I, for one, will be in favor of that. Well, a lot of places do uh, over, everybody gets this increase then they do merit increases the state does that's the way the state operates and that's something we should be looking at right and, and if we were doing that it might not be the full 2.1 percent it, it might be it might be the 2.1 percent is a budget and everybody gets 1.1 plus half of the delta and then we use that little tiny you know some other method but that's not where we are right now no we're going to judge it with the parents we're going to make that decision the board uh, we will. We, do we, we go through the yeah, we, we go through the evaluation. So you know, a guy like me listening down all his life and she's just all day long. I'm not up in the bushes a few hours on that. I see what they do, I know what they do. And I'm not tonight, I'm gonna to talk about but we are gonna talk about all of my tree, AD trees dead and can we? and then I'm not talking about it. Okay. So we just I just want to keep us you know focus. Just what, on what we're doing. We're interested in knowing what you see too. That, yeah. that what we evaluate. You've got to give them a grade by what they do, not what what they want. Perform. Yeah. And yeah. we're also going to be looking at the hidden, I call it the, right. hidden, the hidden paycheck, mm -hmm. which is your insurance, your retirement, your life insurance, disability, long-term, short-term, dental. Yeah. The town pays those premiums. Right. And that's that's huge. Why well, not huge? Yeah. So that's something we are going to look at, and I don't think people really understand all of the benefits that there are. And also, I just want to say, you know, we're a volunteer board. We meet twice a month, sometimes more. So we we have to do things in a certain progression, right. and we can't yeah. just comment on things without meeting as a board. So anyway, so the motion is out there. It's been seconded. Are you ready to vote? Yeah. Is there any 
did you ask if anyone else had questions? Oh, no, I didn't see anybody raise, take their video thing off so that we could see them if they had a question. <laughs> so if anyone out there participating by Zoom has a question, you do have the option. Um, you should have a toolbar at the bottom of your screen uh, with a reactions tab where you can raise your hand to be recognized. You can also opt to enable your video and just raise your hand physically to be recognized. Or worst case scenario, just unmute your microphone and say, excuse me, pardon, I have a question yeah. or a comment. Okay, hearing none. Okay, um, we don't have to vote individually now because we're back to public meetings. So everybody in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, okay. Do you have that taken for the record? Okay, um, we have an election coming up on Wednesday and um, we budgeted $43,709. That's with this 2.1 increase for the position of town clerk. 43, what is it? It is 43709. Um, FY21, it was 4227. Um, so we should decide if we're going to pay that to the newly elected town clerk. And we don't know who that is yet, right? All right. So, what are people's thoughts? Cliff? So that number was arrived at because we have a town clerk who has experience. It wasn't just developed over one year. That number evolved over time. Okay. Um, as I recall, there may have been a market adjustment even for that position at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think what we need to do is have some kind of mechanism of once this person's elected, we bring them in at a certain rate and then be able to evaluate their performance and determine what's the appropriate compensation mm -hmm. and also, you know, have that conversation with whoever it is just to make sure they have the tools they need to succeed. If there's area that their experience doesn't cover and they need additional training, we need to be able to acknowledge that, make sure they get it. That's another hit to the budget. So these are all factors that uh -huh. need to be considered. So are you suggesting we not decide tonight? No, I'm suggesting you might want to think of what we might want to think about is a, a starting level. Starting and then reevaluate re after 90 days or whatever appropriate oh. period of time the select board thinks and then offer an increase if it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Other select board members have thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I mean, if it's, I mean, we would, we would want to obviously build in inflationary costs from say if, if we had a starting salary, point, I don't know where we get that zero right now, you know, that zero point. But we want to build inflation up from the next to establish. So at least that's the real zero. It's not mm -hmm. actually losing value. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then maybe that's a, do we do a revisit at yeah, six months or something like that? Like it's typically done and then, um, you know, make an adjustment from that point. I would think if we do that, we would, we would have to budget to have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'd have to have that allocation of money set aside it doesn't mean we have to salary to that point right away mm -hmm. do we think that anybody that's on the two candidates running do we think that anybody's looked at the budget and figures out what they're going to be making i would assume that they have yeah frankly um so i think i have a different perspective um than cliff and rick um and i and i have always struggled to wrap my head around this completely but the the town clerk doesn't report to us. Right. The town clerk reports to Doug and all of us as, as citizens, but not as the board. And I, I don't, I don't, I assume it is not really our job to assess performance. Um, right? I mean, the, 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 tax voter, the voters will assess performance. The, uh, the voters assess performance. Um, and and also, 
you know, $43,000 a year for a, you know, demanding professional position isn't to me, it's not crazy. It's not at all crazy. Um, what I would like to see is a shift from what has been perceived and, and applied as an hourly position. Salary. I would salary. like us to say, and maybe this kind of strikes the balance, that this is a salary position. You do the job that needs to be done. Um, if that includes, you know, extra hours because you're on a learning curve, then we expect that that's what you're going to do. If it means that, um, you know, you hear loud and clear from people that they want some Saturday morning hours, you know, once a month mm -hmm. that, that, so, so I think that's where I would come at it is I would in good faith be willing to pay $43,700 for a full-time, for a, what should be a full-time job. Um, and it's going to be hopefully more than full-time if you're really putting yourself on the learning curve that, you know, Cliff is talking about. Um, but that it be on a salary rate basis, not hourly, which I'm going to say one more thing means I don't want to hear about how many hours you have to put in. You know, you're on a learning curve, one thing. B, you took a job that at times of election and other times requires a, requires a bump in your energy and a bump in your, your, um, Hours. Your hours, yeah. On the other hand, we don't set your salary, your vacation schedule. So, in if you take time off um, to make up for that and restore your energy, that's up to you. So, I don't feel like it's our job, the town's job, to be looking at how many hours. And here's, a, and here's another thought. Um, I tend to think that whoever is running would have looked at the budget to see what the salary is and may not have run if it was significantly less. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree that really the town court reports to the, the residents, the voters, the town people. Yeah. We, we set the salary when we do the budget. And if somebody has not been able to grasp the duties and do what they need to do and we have to get somebody in to help, we can at the next budget round, we can lower the salary. We're gonna to have to cross that bridge. So we need to, I think we would, we would cross that bridge when we get there. Um, so that's my thoughts. And I think whoever gets elected is gonna hopefully be able to come up to speed pretty quickly and get the training they need and hopefully a lot of people will work out. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of options. Mm -hmm. I like the, what Sharon said too, about doing support of a professional position. I certainly like it. I like that before the salary. What we want to do is see if other towns out there too, if their salary position can get some idea. You know, what I don't know is how many hours they work a year. And so, you know, the town clerk. So if we've got some idea of that, that helps us. Because that, that right. does have a lot to do with right. And we can, right, we, can, we can yeah. do some delving into that. Yeah. See, you know, are other town clerks salaried? How many hours a week do they average? Mm -hmm. What is their pay? We can, yeah, as we're doing some of this other right. delving into benefits kind of thing, because they do have good benefits as well. Yeah, they, do. they yeah. have all the same benefits as the road crew. Sure. The, the uh, VLCT survey that we participated in two years ago, I think it's that we got the data um, has salary, I believe it has salary, it may not, it definitely has part-time, part -time, full-time. But again, the, sal the town clerk works for, the, works for themselves and the town. Right. Okay, so, so um, <clears throat> yeah, we can't require them to chat for hours. <laughs> like, there's a bunch of, I would just say, do the job that needs to be done. It's all working great if the land records are well kept. <laughs> The licenses get processed and nobody complains. Yeah. I think there we just want to be as fair as we can. Uh, that look at the job and say how many yeah. hours does it require? That tells us, you know, that gives us an idea of where that sounds like. I think, I think when after the election, um, whoever's elected as town clerk, we should ask them to join us so we can yeah. meet them and well chat right them and regularly, and, maybe. Yeah. Um I well, Rick, maybe we're maybe we have knowledge that we're not 
like we're assuming you have. I think our, my belief is that that town clerk <laughs> job has been consistently 32 to 40 hours a week. Um, yeah, when they're doing, know, when they're doing no, no, no. I think that no, I think I think we all kind of know that, right? right. So I'm um, just yeah. So and I think during yeah, elections, that's a shit job. Yeah. elections, getting the town report done, I think the hours increase, but I think it, I think probably, hopefully it levels out. Yeah, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you know, we could ask a new town clerk, right, and working with us if they if they would track their hours. I know Judy was always very cooperative. In, in yeah, how many hours? But I think um, the learning curve means you're going to put in more hours. Yeah, so I, mean, so I wouldn't say for anybody. You know, if the new town clerk says I'm working 50 hours a week, I'd be like, yeah, welcome to a new job. That'll well, go down. The you'll get you right. get that. happens to everybody when they take a new job. Yep. I mean, most of the salary, you know, the, the hour rate, right, you know, kind of very general, but I don't see it would say in a salary position, it's not a okay. to expect 10 hours of overtime a week. Then, you're not kind of obviously not compensated for. Beyond that, you start looking at is the is your range higher? Right. Well, and the and the yeah. town and the town decides whether that person is doing the job. Right. By how they vote. Perform. Yeah. So I we have still quite a few more things to do before seven. So so can we have a we are I'm I hearing that we want to there should be a motion to pay the newly elected town for a salary of. Forty-three thousand seven hundred nine dollars for FY twenty-two. So moved. And Saturday. Second. Second. Yep. All right. Are you ready to vote? Uh, question. I'm assuming we have the bandwidth and latitude to be able to make this a solid position. Does not require a statute change. I don't think so. Oh, I don't think so. No, no. I, I think so. plenty of town clerks already are salary. Yeah. As long as I mean, it's within their purview. Yeah. I mean, if we, find out, if we find out we're wrong, then we'll fix it. It certainly fits, you know, from a labor standards perspective. You, you know, well, we pay our town treasurer who is an employee. That's different. A salary. So. Right, but yeah, I mean, you make your own job. You make your own hours. You're, you're not the yeah. boss. I, I, if we find out differently, we can always go back. We can we can say so start. So, but I don't yet. Are you ready to vote? Yeah. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. I think John might have just driven. No, in. John's in Maine. Oh, John's in Maine. Okay, never mind. Somebody yeah, has just driven. In. Um, co consideration of COVID bonus. Katie has her hand up. Oh, Katie, yes, I'm sorry. Can I ask a quick question? I see that the um, the motion was for forty two thousand seven hundred. At the beginning of the discussion, there was um, com I think I think the number I wrote down was forty three thousand seven hundred nine was budgeted for FY twenty two, but the amount that I just told you is correct. It's forty two thousand seven hundred for FY twenty two. Katie, it's forty three seven zero nine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Everywhere. <laughs> Um, okay, consideration of staff bonuses um, as sort of as a, we recognize how difficult things were when COVID was happening. Everybody had to do things different, jump through different hoops, all these different things. Um, there's ARPA money and some of which can be used to give staff bonuses. Um, I don't know yet all of the process for that because we've been asked by CD Fiber to turn over the majority of our funds to, to them for high-speed internet and whatnot. And I don't know, I did check with, um, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but I checked with um, Cindy who helped us with the union stuff. Mm -hmm. Hey Bruce, you can have to do to see if their firm was going to be doing administration, you know, bookkeeping, data entry of COVID money. And they aren't. I checked, I'm waiting to hear back from Father Gill, Savannah, and Valley to see if they're doing um, any kind of help to towns because Sandra really doesn't have the bandwidth. And it sounds like the, the reporting requirements for this COVID money, ARPA money, are going to be pretty significant. There's going to be a lot of data entry, there's going to be a lot of moving, moving pieces. The deadline for applying for the money 
is July 15th. Um, so we don't have to just, we don't have to finalize, I guess, tonight because we don't have all the information we need. The um, percentage of COVID bonuses, but I want to just have this discussion. So if we're checking on firms to come and help us with this money, we have an idea of what, what we're going to do with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we all agreed that giving some CV fiber was, yeah, was something we were considering. And I think um, I would like to see us give all of the staff a bonus, whether it's percent, three percent, five percent hardship bonus. Hey Scott. Hey Scott. Yeah, yeah. Hard, and, and I did check, and that's a lot of an allowable use mm -hmm. of the COVID funds. And is Denise? I think when we were speaking the other day, you said that we also can use the funds to pay the person who's helping us manage yes. the, the grant. That's right. really important. Yes. Um, yeah, you can use the COVID money or the ARPA. I don't want to call it compliant COVID money. It's ARPA money. Yep. They can be paid through our however much we get. I don't even know for sure how much we're going to get. Um, we can pay for the somebody to manage the fund, use it to, for bonuses. We can just some CV fiber. I don't know maybe what other things we might think of, but we have to think quick because we have to request the money by July 15th. And then we can figure out who's going to be, how we're going to pay to have it managed later. Yes. Well, sort of. I mean, if we can get somebody on board sooner rather than later to help us manage this, because we need somebody to go in there to this portal. I've, I've attended some um, ELCT webinars and things like that, and you have to go into this portal yeah. and request the money, and that has to be done by July 15th. So we don't want to wait till July 12th okay. when everybody else is doing it, and the system will probably crash. Right. Do we, so is this something that we would actually advertise for a position or is it something where we know somebody who's, Scott and Doug are not paying attention. No, you guys need to behave. So I, was, so I was starting to ask. This is a celebration. It Scott, is a celebration. It's I was, about us. I was, I was starting to ask if we know anybody who is skilled at grant management and has done that for the town before, that we could, that we, that, that we at least know there are people out there. If we're going to pay, as you guys know, I'm a believer and we should put it on front porch form, but it's always nice to know that there's certain people who might step forward and say, got the skills, done it before, have the time. Right. I think this is a whole new kind of it's a whole new brand kind of grant administration. That's why I was checking with some people that we've used before. Right. Just to see if their firms are doing it to give us some idea of, yeah, do they have somebody there with the skills to do it? And then I think we should interview if we have more than one, um, you know, what percentage of this ARPA money would you take for your services? Right. You know, do you have somebody that you're training to do this job because I think we it's going to be a lot and there's going to be a lot of reporting mm -hmm. requirements. Yeah. We need somebody who's really on the ball. Well, and actually, is. I like the other thing that what you're describing accomplishes is instead of being one deep, because we've hired a one-off person who's going to learn it and do it, and then they leave. Or if you if we hire an accounting firm or somebody like that who decides, oh, this is a business opportunity for us then they're the ones mm -hmm. who will keep the personnel trained on board. Right. And to we do don't it. have to worry about the personnel. Right. And we don't have to worry about the personnel. Yeah, I actually really like that. So you and said I you think, reached out to Sullivan Powers. Yeah, right. Um, so I'm going to check with, I've got Sullivan and Powers and Nemrick actually check with. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned and I'll let you no, well, then VLC, I mean, does VLC, did they have any ideas on, on this? Did they see, say, who's going to jump into this business? No, they have somebody at VLCT that they onboarded to work with towns um, with ARPA mm -hmm. and questions and stuff, but they're not doing the grant administration. Right. There. No, I wouldn't expect that. Right. I would but expect they might, they might say, this there. is the kind of business, this is the kind of work that these kinds of entities will be picking up. Yeah. 
but no, they haven't but, said that yet. So, in that too, even in that ARPA field, this is a work. It's a possibility of potential culvert funding or something like that being picked up. And it's possible. I talked to Pam. I talked to Pam DeAndrea early uh, on. Yeah. Because I was thinking the same thing. Could we use it for it's something like that? And I, and I think it's it's a possibility. I don't know that we have a, an uh, answer a final yet. answer, but yeah. you might check with me. Yeah. I just don't think about it. It's yeah. more the deadline that concerns me. Well, we, the deadline is we have to request the money. That's mm -hmm. that's the critical thing that we have to do first is request the money, and then dispersing it. We have time, and it's I think the, the ARPA funds run through twenty twenty four for you to use reserve, them, and then you got to do all these reporting requirements. And that's why it would be good if we could get some firm that's going to. Have employees that are trained mm -hmm. and they worry about the personnel stuff and benefits and pay and all that. And and who is do we have I think what I'm hearing is we don't have to know what we're applying for when we apply. We don't know how we don't have to know what we're sure what we're gonna spend it on, but we right. have to apply for it by July 15th. Right. And June, so yeah, June, July. Um, are we July looking for 15th. one of those firms to also do the application or is yep. okay? Yep. Okay. So we may have to do um, a special meeting between now and our meeting on July 12th. Mm -hmm. okay. If I'll get some more information and get it out there. Okay. So, okay, so this still just leads us into, oh, oh, so we're not gonna approve COVID bonuses because we don't know yet what money we're gonna have available and what the whole, High looks like the hot pot looks like and what the demands on it are. And you know, is it easier to just give um, CD Fiber all the money and come up with bonus money out of our budget? So that's something to think about too. That to me depends on. Can we find an administrator? Can we find an administrator? How much does? CV Fiber want. I have a bunch of questions about, about that proposal. Well, we know CV Fiber wants all of it or whatever we can do. So that's what they said when they were here. They would take whatever we would give them, but they would like to have it all. But I think we need to be, this is like pot of gold. You know, this is one, sure. one yeah. chance opportunity here. Oh, well, and, and then it's, yeah, this is a Christmas tree and it's our job to manage the demands on it. Right. right. Okay. I, they should ask for all of it. Good for them. Yeah. <laughs> you know. All right. So, um, you ready to move on to the next item? Public record. So, when, so we're going to, okay. Yeah, I guess. I'm going to get some more information. Yeah. And then we may have to have a special meeting to decide. Hopefully we can find somebody to be the administrator. Of this right. money, right? Mm -hmm. All right, public record request. We had our public record request. Yes, uh, Richard Hyde is with us uh, this evening. Hello, Mr. Hyde. Um, asked, uh, sent me an email, uh, I believe it was on Friday, or maybe it was Thursday evening, um, asking about the uh, file that we developed while we were in union negotiations. Um, that basically. It wasn't a, um, it wasn't like a full benchmark. A, benchmark, thank you. That's the term I'm trying to find. Yeah. It wasn't a, a true benchmarking tool. It was just, we were trying to find out what the other towns around us were doing um, and also what some of the other union shops were doing so we could compare that information to what the union was requesting in the union contract. So I wanted to have the board discuss this because um, I think it is fair enough to share that information with the public. However, it does contain some very specific data with regards to the negotiations that were taking place at the time with the union. Mm -hmm. And um, I would think that even though we're no longer part of those negotiations, um, it, might be advisable that we redact that. Mm -hmm. information. Right. Well, and just to be clear, the union withdrew. 
from negotiations. Just to be crystal super clear, it was not the select board that withdrew from negotiations. It was or the, the union themselves. Or the crew. Right. It was the union. So anyways, um, so I don't know now whether or not, as you said, there's some information that might be sensitive, mm -hmm. whether we want to redact it or we want to just put it out there. I mean, if the union negotiations are over, the union withdrew from representation, is it still considered confidential or sensitive? And I guess I don't really know yet. How it, how it well, and is that part of it really the part that's of interest? Um, it is. Okay, I guess, I mean, people could be interested. I don't know what it really gets you. The other part of it, the part that is basically um, public information, if you want to put the time into gathering it, right? All of the, the, you know, various pieces from other towns. I wouldn't really have any problem with sharing that. I just, with the understanding, this is, these may not be the right towns. <laughs> It's it's incomplete. It's not a benchmark. Well, it's not apples to apples or oranges to oranges. It's impossible it's, to have it because it's yeah. It's because in, each town tends to be different. Every town is different. It's in, and it's incomplete. What's in that What's in that spreadsheet is just some pieces. If I'm remembering, it's not the whole yeah, story. Yeah, the, basically <laughs> it lists um, where we could where we could get the information because not all the towns shared all of the information mm -hmm. with us, but. We asked about uh, wages. We asked about benefits. In other words, health plans, uh, dental, uh, life. But it doesn't talk about things like uh, retirement. Right. That's not included in right. this file. So it, it wouldn't right. be a complete picture that you would require for benchmarking. Right. Um, but like I say, it was just we were kind of on the fly trying to gather information so we could compare it to what the union was requesting mm -hmm. in the contract. The other data that is uh, somewhat sensitive in the document is for the other towns that provided information, they provided rates of pay and whatnot um, based on job titles. They did not give us individuals' names, but it does contain individuals' names who are employees of the town or were employees of the town at the time that the, the study was put together. Right. Um, and I don't know that that's necessarily public information. Yes, the amount of money that we budgeted for salaries or wages is part of the budget, part of the public records, but individuals' rates of pay, as far as I know, are not necessarily public information. Well, going back to my days in the state government, anybody could ask what I made, yeah. and it's public information, okay. or what John Bell yeah, made, or what Rick Keen made, or what you made. You could ask specifically for that information. The other option, too, is the union, I mean, the crew all had copies of that same information that they could publicize if they chose. No. They don't have it? I thought they did. No. Because we we had different proposals that we were considering as a select board, okay. but not all of those proposals were put in front of the union. Right. All right, can you call up the one that is the one that Jim looked at and redacted? Just to be clear as well, the, the union didn't withdraw, they didn't decertify, right? right. They stopped representing. Right, they, yeah, it's called, it's called, I don't know, if, I guess I have the wrong terminology, yeah, but it's yeah. decertified, yeah, that, which was technically a with, withdrawing from negotiations. Negotiations. It's a law for right. not right. being represented. Right, we were, we, the, the select board thought <coughs> we were ready to sign. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we get this notice that, oh, we're right. decertifying. So right. we were just a little, we were shocked, right? Well, and the, yeah, so the reason that we were looking at the towns we were looking at is because they were union towns and we were trying to just get a sense. This, we even gathered that pretty early on. We were trying to get a sense of what are we, you know, what are we talking about here? Because they, it's not like they handed us that information. No, we, we had to script. We, yeah, had, we had to had go to dig and get it. do the homework to inform ourselves mm -hmm. With this union, what might we, what are we, what might we be dealing with? So, so we, have, so we have this public records request, and by statute, we have to respond within three business days, not three calendar days, but in business days. So the question is, I don't know, can uh, can the people click that are on Zoom see this? 
I don't think how this works for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. It looks like Jim redacted basically, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of what we're talking about. Right. The stuff that mm -hmm. is their proposed <coughs> numbers that proposed to us plus some scenarios that the select board had considered mm -hmm. to propose back to the union. But not all of those scenarios were floated in front of the union. Right. Some of those were just in executive discussions. Right. So Jim also redacted those. Yeah. Uh, so, so for what, example, there was, let me see if I can pull. Yeah, there was some different proposals that we had looked at. Yeah. Um, Jim redacted that, recommended that mm -hmm. we redact that as well because it was related to these negotiations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you click on insurance, a wage is what? I forget what's wages yeah. kind of starts an overview just talking about what different towns do mm -hmm. and their different um, rates of pay and whatnot. And these are the other towns that we looked at that were unionized, correct? Yeah. Some were unionized and some were not. Okay. Yeah. So here in this tab is where we noted who was unionized and who was not. Mm -hmm. The contract period indicates if they were union town or non union town. And then comps and props, props, what's in that tab? That has specific uh, wages and salaries by title, mm -hmm. as well as specific numbers related to proposals that Jim also redacted. Mm -hmm. And then the scrolling up. So these are all, yeah, available publicly if you feel like doing the homework. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how would we, how would we share this with the person who asked had the public records request? Do we have to? We we put it. What I would recommend we do because uh, Mr. Hyde did is the one who specifically requested it. But I know that there are definitely going to be other members of the community who mm -hmm. would be curious. What I would recommend we do is that as we do with anything we look at in meetings, um, we make the pu documents public uh, through the website and we, we go ahead and share it. Um, I can send a link to anyone who asks specifically for it. Okay, so we can have a tab on the website that says what this is. Yeah, or it could just be it, it just be in the <laughs> cloud with the minutes of the meeting part of our normal like process. our normal process okay. is. Yeah. But I would also have a unique link that goes directly to that. So if somebody came to okay. any of us and said, I would like to see that document, please, we just send them the link and they mm -hmm. can go straight to it without having to search through the website mm -hmm. in the minutes and all of that. Can okay. we can we um, can we overlay in like a text box two things, but can we do you know, maybe we don't know, but I would want us to PDF. The spreadsheets instead of well, and, and that would be, it would be blocked, it would be view only. Okay, view only. And can we put a text box on that says these are incomplete and the select board does not consider them benchmarks? If we were going to do benchmarking, we would be what we were saying earlier, we would be looking at the right towns, you know, similar sized. Um, we would look at comprehensively at vacations and you know, other things that this, this doesn't really show. And we would be looking a little more in the, just the central Vermont neighborhood. And so that's, so that's a, like a little point I would want text boxed onto this too. How about, how about this, Sharon? If you would wordsmith that for me, sure. I can add it to every tab. Sure, yep. Does, I mean, does everybody agree with yeah. that? Yeah, no, I, I have no problem putting this out there. I think it would be good for people to see. Right. I think it's important for everyone to know the, the good benefits that we give all of our employees. Yeah. Okay, so I will, I will, um, I will wordsmith something for the tab. Something as a text box to over. You know what I mean when I say text box? Yeah. 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 Just something that yeah. sits yeah. on top of, uh, not on top of the whole thing, but it's like. What I would propose is we have a, a the intro app. Sure. And, and we call it background or something like that. And then we just put exactly. whatever the statement that you have. You can add a tab? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You can delete them too. <laughs> well, that would be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> Probably should. Uh, um, 
Well, I'm going to actually, I agree with the intro tab, but I'm going to make a pitch click that we actually have a tech block because, because people, you know, Denise uh, just asked. You can, I can, I'm certainly willing to do that. The reason I suggest that we also have a tab is because we have some tabs here where the information pretty much covers it and you're not going to see a text, text box, box unless you make a point of scrolling through the entire document. You could like, well, if, so you could like, um, or I could do it at the beginning. Just insert a couple of you could, of you, yeah, you could insert a couple <clears throat> of rows and merge, like yeah, make yeah. a new line seven, merge yeah, it and put the big thing in there. And the reason that I think that's, that's good is because, you know, Denise just asked, oh, you can, you can add a tab. People who aren't really um, very, I mean, familiar with Excel. And so the idea that you can actually move around on tabs is going to be, un, is not going to be known to everybody. So I want that statement on. Anyway, so we've, we've solved the problem. You can yeah. do it by adding so lines. Yep. You'll get some language can and you'll put it in. Can you get yep. that to me first thing in the morning so that I can circulate this within the Yep. Requisite yep. I will word something tonight, word with something tonight. So I think you, so in the worst case, if we tinker with it and we can change it over time, right? So the record yeah. should be the record should reflect in the minutes that we are responding to Mr. Hyde's records request by providing the information. I don't know what we're going to call this. What are we going to call this? Um, it's uh, it's um, a study of um, Wages and insurance, a comparative study that was done in May of uh, 2020. Okay. And we will make that available to the public. And I think that should answer Mr. Hyde's request. And we're doing it within the three business day timeframe that we need to do it within. Do we, I don't know, I guess we should make a motion to put this information forward. And so, so everything Denise just said, Katie, if you got all that, and I want to add, and then I will make the motion, and we are redacting as advised by town council. Is that a, that's a and then with that, with that add, so move. So you kind of added to what I said. Yeah, and okay, so and you're, you're making the motion, are you seconding? No, I also want to comment in this. Do we, I mean, this information will also be part of the list. Yes. So it's essentially, it's already publicly posted. Yeah. So we, you know, we but we all, we're adding detail to. Right. You know, we, yeah. Just yeah, comment. but I did uh, promise Mr. Hyde that I would yes, send him yeah. a copy of the file and later to tomorrow. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Yeah, and right. we want the changes in the file when it goes out. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm just if anyone in Zoom land has any comments or questions. Yeah, I don't know. Anybody in Zoom land have any comments or questions? Zoom land is very quiet. And not audience and, and not yeah, visible. What about, us? What about the 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 Raise my hand while I'm coming up. You know? Oh, I didn't see it. I'm sorry. We all get to be exhausted before. Yeah, I want to talk about the guy in the I've talked to him for two hours. He's very close. Good. He's very qualified. The only problem I had with him, he too qualified. He's not going to stay there. I talked to him about working Saturdays, half day Saturdays. He thought I think he was talking, interested in doing it half day Fridays. I don't like what's going on up there now. I don't like it the way they have five days, they work five days, they don't work five days, they work four. They have vacation, comes on holiday, comes on Friday, they have Monday on and Tuesday. You know, it's crazy. No wonder they gotta have more help. We can't afford the taxpayers need. And we let it go on and on and on. Not right. Just so you understand, the town clerk gets to set the hours. We don't have any control over it. We can request. Well, I don't know why we don't. It's in statute. Huh? It's, state in, law. It's, in, it's in statute. It's in law. state law. We don't okay. Well, he said he would think about Saturday morning. That's nice. nice. Right. That's nice. nice. That's what people should do. Yeah. Yeah. Half a day, Saturday morning. I said, I don't give a shit. What day you take off? Or half a day would you take off? Just give a Saturday morning to people who work every day yeah. and come to be there. Yeah. And he's interested in doing it. Okay. And he's yeah. very qualified, I tell you. I yeah. got him for two hours one day. Yeah. yeah. Good. He's very good. Yeah, very good. The other guy in East Gallup Village, 
Well, and so yeah, Doug, it's state law that the town clerk, the town clerk is an independent person and reports. Sure, anybody is. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why they're, they're elected. elected. Uh, that's they're why elected. they're elected. Yeah, you hire him. Yeah, they're both men who are running. You hire him when you when the oh. town elects him, just like you hire us when we're elected and we're accountable to you. So I it's wish you were. <laughs> We do our best. We do our best to be. Our best. Best. Uh, really I want to. If I come in, you don't want to talk to me about things. I want to talk about the world. I want to talk about this. I want signs on the road. I had an accident last week. Okay. John Rayban had an accident. Yeah. It's really hot about it. Um, never mind. Uh, we have the agenda for tonight. If you have something that you want me to put on the agenda, let me know. Can we fill copies of the agenda? That I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't. Doug, copies. I was going to say, mm -hmm. I will start. Trying to bring an extra copy if you're going to. Or I can email it to you. I can put you on the email chain for the agenda. Yeah, I'm like that. Do I want to email? I don't want to miss something. I'm going to bring. I'm going to start when I print one out for me. I'm going to print a couple of extra. We should have some extra anyways for people who show up. But I yeah. We also need it to be captured to do Katie to uh, reinstate sign-in sheets. Oh right, sign-in sheets. Yes, those are the things we used to do before COVID. Before we, we, we forgot about. And so, yeah, our, our task, Doug, is always trying to get too many things. Okay, so let's talk yeah, about yeah. the next meeting I can tell you here, and I'll bring more people with me, and we'll talk about speeding, signs, and talk about the road committee. We'll talk about it. There's a lot. Yeah, so I'm making, a, I'm making a note, Doug, because we aren't going to have time tonight to get into that, but I'll make a note to put it on our next agenda yeah. on July 12th. Okay, so signage. We've got a motion in a second. Yeah. Bruce has a question too. Oh, yes. Um, well, I have, I have a question. Maybe the question should come later. Um, I, I just wanted to let Rick know um, the road crews version of why we went. Um, well, our very first meeting was a fire ship. We it more than two hours, maybe two hours and 20 minutes. And all we wanted, the road crew wanted to talk about is waiting. And the select board wanted to find out why definitions of labor things we never even have to wait. Um, so there's a long time before the next meeting. Um, twice the union filed grievances in the litigation board to, to force meetings. Um, it was one six. It was one six. Yeah. I thought it was one six. And then we tracked it. We were uh, getting even and I think we did it again. No. Um, but what was there? Five meetings in 23 months or something like that? Oh, no. Very, very few. No. Are you kidding uh, me? We met the select board. This was well before COVID. We uh, can't really. Um, it went a long time without meetings. And every time we. Got a meeting, it seemed like the, the first June proposal was 2495 for me. That got knocked down at 23. I did not close. Um, but every time another proposal came out, there was nothing for the road crew and there were additions down the line <coughs> to the that they had to add on, including raising the 10 to 15 percent of the book. Uh, eventually, the union got frustrated, especially after Paul left. There was only two people that were in the main union dues, and this is why the union left. Paul left. There was only two left to pay dues. And, <coughs> and we didn't sign it because at, at those rates that were on it and all the other stuff that Trump would have added, we didn't think it was a good deal. However, after the union dropped out, we were this, my proposal was to go with the union proposal because without having to pay the union dues, now it's a fair thing. So um, okay, just are you are you I I yeah uh, uh, I, I have more but it's some later call me okay. talk later more about um that. just to be clear, there was one thing that was filed with the labor relations board and we explained that the contract 
request hit us as we were doing budget season. Then we had COVID, then you were on three months leave. So in, in amongst all of that stuff going on as a volunteer board, we met, I can't even tell you how many times, a lot of times we met with our consultant over Zoom because we couldn't meet in person, as you know. Um, we had, I can't even tell you, I'd have to count up how many times we met, but it was a lot. And then we met with you folks at the calendar art a couple of times. We met at the, at the corner community center. Um, and in negotiations, unfortunately, nobody gets everything they want. We didn't get everything we want. We didn't get everything you wanted. And that's, yeah. that's the nature of negotiations. And, 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 you had, and, 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 to be, and to be clear, you know, we sent you a memo with your retroactive pay asking for an opportunity to meet with the road crew before we could even get there. Other things materialized. Some of the information that was circulated was, circulated was inaccurate. Oh, and oh. Some of the stuff that was circulated, I don't, no, I'm not gonna mention uh, names. Be more specific. The fact that the union was busted by the select board is not accurate. That's not how it was worded. Anyways, I'm not, I don't know, I don't, we're not going to get into picking all of this part tonight. It's not on the agenda for that tonight. Okay. But we do want to set up a time, and that would be probably a better time if you want to talk further about uh, this. Uh, um, on, on the union service, that's all I had. Um, we, I, I want to say something on to respond to some of the points that that um, Bruce made in, a, in and build on what Denise just said. In addition, to the innumerable times that the select board met with our own consultant to work on the power piece of it. Um, our consultant and, and the, yeah. un the union rep yeah. met a lot of times. Um, and also it, it wasn't just, there, there were points where it wasn't the select board, like we, we would put forward a proposal. And I think at one point, at least once, several times it was weeks, once it was months before we heard, we heard back. And we were, we were, you know, it's kind of saying, well, maybe we should, of course, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to complain about that. But um, yeah, sometimes he was not very prompt in responding to what if we sent them. Right, but see, these are the pieces because, that you're missing, and you're not giving the whole story yeah. to the public, and that's it's, not fair. It's not on us, in other words, there. Yeah. You're putting it on us, and it's not right. Know, yeah. Right, and and I mean, my recollection is the first meeting that we had with you guys was right as we were heading into budget. And then we had to work on the budget and we, we also did some work here and there on it. But by the time we'd finished up the budget, it was, it was March of, it was March a year and a half ago. Um, we did, well, we met at the town garage because I know we all had masks on. Right, but, but, but I mean, COVID was a very big participant in, in mm -hmm. our ability mm -hmm. to be productive. Mm -hmm. yeah, anyway. Yeah, we called the union in July. Yeah. If I have time, I'm going to go back and figure out how many times we, we actually did make yeah. 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 us me, me, the crew would have just left me there. Right, and, and that was impacted by COVID okay. because but it was a person. And you don't do Zoom. Yeah. So if you kind of left us with our hands tied, how are we going to meet if you don't do Zoom and you're on yeah. by phone? Is, so I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you, you have. I appreciate what you all wanted, but I think the other side of the story is important. And if we're going to work together going forward, we can't be bashing each other. I know, and, and I felt like you were bashing me in your last meeting. You know, right? No, we're just trying to we're trying to set this record straight because the only time we can respond is in a board meeting. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and, and I want to keep civil. Right? I'm trying to keep it simple. Yeah, and we are too. So let's work to let's yes. let's, that, let's set a date for a meeting. Yeah. Let's see how we can look at this and, and learn from this experience and move forward. We're willing to look at what the proposals mm -hmm. were that were in the negotiation. We're willing to look at that. But we also need 
the road crew to work with us. All right. Um, my question was, what is the difference? You, you, you keep talking about how great the health insurance is. We're one step above other towns. What is the, the monetary amount that we're paying more than the next step down? We can get we can get you some information that will show you the benefits that you receive from the town, what your share is, how much percentage. Like let's say the percentage of um, say the premium for the health insurance is hundred dollars. You're paying ten percent, so you're paying ten dollars. We're paying ninety of that hundred dollars. Yeah, it's hundred dollars. Right. So we can we can we can look at all that no, and try to. What I'm asking is monetary amount. Say, I, I don't know, what is our premium per person annually? Is it like 11,000, 14,000? We can get that. Um, get that information. What I'm getting at is our plan is not thousands and thousands of dollars more than, than we're at the county, but I'm thousands and thousands of dollars underpaid. Very good. Yeah, that's you keep bringing up the health benefits of being so great, but it's only I think it's fourteen hundred dollars more. Plus, well, the town also. Has, can we? Can, I, I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna ask for for a off on this because this is this is to me, Bruce. You came here asking for information that Denise is now pulling out of her brain you're pulling out of your brain not nobody has the facts in front of them this is this is the kind of conversation that needs to happen at a meeting well, at a yeah. meeting at a meeting right right so also this is exactly the kinds of conversations that we were having with the union. So I wouldn't be surprised if you have some of this information in the materials that you got from the yeah, union. I don't no, know what they were. Well, I, well, some of that stuff is in there. But we need to, we need to, yeah, we need to go because it's 7.15. And, and one more thing I want to say, Denise, um, you, you offered to make a timeline of all the meetings and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to urge you not to do that. Okay. Nothing yeah. is going to result from a timeline other than he said, she said. And it's it's not using our it doesn't change a dang thing about what already happened. Okay. What we have to do, have to do it. yeah, don't do it. We have to put our attention instead into how do we move forward productively. So, so let's pick a date now. I know you mentioned something about Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock. I'm available. Are you available? Uh, maybe available. Right. That's Rick, I don't Wednesday, know, I don't this Wednesday? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if John's available or not. Um, but we want to do this sooner rather than later before more misinformation is disseminated. Um, I actually can do this Wednesday. You want to do it here or at the town garage? At four? Yeah, here might be more comfortable. Yeah, I think yeah, well, we should well, do that. <laughs> Well, <laughs> there's no the seats at the town garage are not better. Okay, so but but are hard. we going to be able to have? We're not going to have any data. No, but I think we just need to. I think there's some data that we already have. Okay. I think we just need to come together as a team, talk about this, figure it out, see what we need to look into, and then and then we may have to meet again. Uh. Ooh, okay, um, so this is just this is just a face to face. We're right. so kind of debrief. It's a debrief. We're yeah. not making any no promises. No, no promises. No yeah. Just to talk and move forward together. Yeah. And and well, we'll. You can leave it with us, but no, we really don't. Okay, well then bring it. Bring it. Bring it Wednesday. Um, Actually, I'm getting 95% of the people who get to the board are agreeing with me. Because they only heard from you. Uh, well, uh, so anyways. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, Did we say four or five? Based on the post. Right, I mean, and yeah. uh, um, and uh, people who want to comment to what you're saying, there's a good 60% of the board say anybody with a CBL 
Maybe it's called out at 3 a.m. It's scary. We really need to this. talk. We, we have a, a full agenda. Okay. I really I appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate, appreciate you taking the time and coming tonight right. and being very respectful. And we're, we're very right. happy about that. Yeah. So let's plan to meet on Wednesday at 4 here at the town hall and bring your petition. We'll and who's going to let them, who do we know for sure that the rest of the crew is available? Because this should be a meeting with everybody. Yeah, Tyler. Um, Tyler's available, right? Yeah, I mean, we got to work for them to be right there. Uh, I'll, so, make, so, so, I'll make sure that they can stay right there. Yeah, so make sure, they know it's, make sure they know it's here. We'll, we'll be here at four. So when you guys show up. No, no, Denise, I'm sorry. This is Barbara. We have an election at the town hall on Wednesday. Oh, you're right. Uh -huh. You're right. Thank you. There's All right. Nice you get your way. Town garage. Town garage. Town garage. garage. But it won't be as nice as it was. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Just clean the bathroom ahead of time. Hmm? Just make sure the bathroom's clean. <laughs> that was about my yard. Every time we came there, that was my thing. You make sure the bathroom's clean. So, so Bruce is going to let the crew know, and yeah. we'll do it there. Okay. Well, yeah. that's good. That's good. Oh. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Warned, We're gonna, yeah, well, hard. I was going to suggest that we continue this meeting tonight to four o'clock on Wednesday. <clears throat> I can do a separate agenda if that's better, but I don't know. Would this be an executive session? I don't know. Because <clears throat> it's personnel. I would encourage to try and avoid executive session as much as possible. And that's like the the elements that arise in the course where we have to say, this is something we need to yeah, discuss okay. in executive session. Right. Yeah. But the goal should be to have an open discussion that the public is available to, is able to participate in yeah, as well. Might have to bring a chair. It won't be zoomable, right? Uh, it would be difficult to make it zoomable given the connection there at the garage. Right, I agree. So it's a public meeting. Certain items may get cut off for, because they belong in executive session. Right. People can come, but we won't be able to Zoom and... Um, so I'll do an agenda rather than just continue this meeting so that it's duly warned and people have an opportunity. I think that that's, I think Otherwise, that, I think yeah. we're gonna end up doing less apologizing and explaining if we just do it that way. Yeah. Yep. All right. Four o'clock. Thank you very much. All right. Thank Thanks you, Bruce. Thanks for coming, Bruce. Good to see you. Take care. You too. Um, okay. So we need to accept the letter of resignation from um, one of the road crew members. Uh, and then what then we we're just going to write a note yes i just circulated yes yeah. very i think it's just good we did it yeah we started doing this <laughs> i think it's good to just do it i think it's i think we should not be asking ourselves whether i make a motion that we all i'm glad you brought it to me that we circulate and i'll sign that the letter of accepting resignation of a road crew member second you had something and you have a question um do we are trying to establish systemic processes, and one of the processes that we've discussed is having exit interviews. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this something we want to consider? Yes. That's actually a really good idea. Well, yeah. We, did, we yeah. did that with Paul. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Another, thank you for remembering. I agree. Yep. Yes. An exit interview. Sure. When sure. is when is the last day? His last day is July eighth. So I could um, add, yes. I could add a sentence to this letter requesting an exit interview, and if I can either sign it or I can bring it Wednesday, let's do that. Mm -hmm. And everybody can sign it. Yep. And we had questions. <coughs> the only thought I had is Wednesday might be an opportunity to have the exit interview. After yeah, the me too. To work. Oh. I could call him. Or no, I have his email. I can email him. Yeah, and then we can still sign it on Wednesday, so that's yeah. formal in the record. Um, do we do that in an executive session? Or do we do that? No, we would do that in an executive session. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And does anybody, I, 
think I will I will try to find we had a set of questions that we use when we met with Paul. Yeah, I have them. I found them the other day when I was cleaning out stuff. Yep. We we had a specific set of questions, so we should kind of do the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well uh yeah. All right, so I will contact that crew member. And then we're gonna sign the letter on Wednesday, notwithstanding yeah. that we're gonna meet with them. That's fine. Okay, and then we have Two more things to get through. Oh, we did the. We just scheduled the. Yeah, we were. I were. Um, I guess we just need to be clear on the zoning administrator hiring process. There were some emails circulating around that Bob was going to be resigning, and he notified the planning commission or whatever. But the correct process is for him to notify the select board. The way that the way it works is that. The planning commission recommends and the select board hires that's in statute um so i think we want to we want a process where we're giving other people an opportunity to apply for the job we didn't have great luck <coughs> when we were looking after i guess it was dot maybe or john said i'm you know, I can't do yeah. this anymore. Yeah. We, only, we only got like one applicant. So it's not like there's going to be a huge <laughs> but, it's pool, due but I think it's our due diligence to advertise for the position. Absolutely. Even if there's somebody in the wings that is interested, I think we have to get in, in, into a process where we're treating all of this stuff fairly across the board. Yep. I agree. Yep. No, and eventually people will catch on that those are there, you know, we always that there are opportunities to volunteer and serve the town mm -hmm. and if we if we let ourselves get trapped and nobody's going to apply then we're not creating them right so so that would be my suggestion that we advertise for the position yeah and i think from talking with jan um on the planning commission there i think they're they're in agreement that that would and i think they would be the ones actually putting out the ad but yeah, I'll, I was gonna say yeah, we can yeah. delegate. They can, they can. Yeah, we can delegate it to them. Um, yeah, because they're 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 providing us with, right. with recommended candidates. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, so I make the motion that we that we delegate to the planning commission um, the task of advertising in our accepted places. And I think we put Front Porch Farm on the list this year. Yeah, and it wouldn't hurt maybe to advertise in the Harvard Gazette. And the Harvard, do we take that off or do we leave that on and add Front Porch Farm? No, Front, front, front Porch Farm is not, I mean, Harvard Gazette is not a normal place where we post okay. notices. Okay. It is if we're, if we're warning a DRV here, okay. it goes to Harvard Gazette. But, if, but I think for something like this, we should also maybe post it in Harvard Gazette. So we don't have to follow our normal notice procedures for this. No, but we should post it in those places as well. Right. Plus, right. So we're plus, so that yeah. So the yeah. motion is that we post it in the in the town's official places, post which I think includes Front Porch Forum. Yeah, right? so the Front Porch Forum website, Maple Corner Store, East Dallas Post Office. Plus. Oh, I see what you mean. And the newspaper is 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 additional. Is different. For something like this, I think we should go in the newspaper. Yeah. Just like your DRB. Notices and things like that go in the newspaper. So, Katie, <laughs> what did we just say? <laughs> okay, Sharon Wynn Fannin made a motion to delegate to the Planning Commission the task of advertising in the town's identified locations and additionally the Hardwick Gazette. Okay, I'll okay. second that. Any further discussion, comment? Okay. Are you ready to vote? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. All right. So I don't know if we've kind of heard public comment or items not on the agenda. Oh, you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, just to bring you, it's really hard to hear it. Is it? It's really hard. Okay. Okay. I can hear all of the word. Really? Yeah. yeah. We're yeah. All Huh. We need more furniture. We need to put a couple of Her, carpets. I was going to say curtains. Uh, curtains. Uh, we, need, we definitely need some curtains here. Yeah. When we got here, you couldn't even 
the sun was like right in your face, which I'm not complaining about the You've sun. been appearing with a halo around you. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> don't, get, don't get scared. Okay. okay. Uh, just a couple. Okay, no, well, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, as well. Actually, it is good to know because is, aren't there things that architectural construction people like? We we're saying rugs and curtains, but aren't there other things? Yeah, yeah. yeah. little so, little like foam things, acoustic yeah. foams. Yeah, and they can reduce the brightness of the room, and we happen oh. to have access to someone who's very versed in such things. Really, you oh. said reduce the bright. The brightness, but you mean the reduce the noise. Brightness oh, is just a term. Oh, I thought we're still on the halo. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we would have a game here. A real game. That's the impact. The more people, the more the sound. Maybe. Maybe. You're yeah, right. that might actually, the more people might help. It does. Well, when yeah. Doug brings all his friends, as he's saying, bring your cows. We'll, we'll test it. You bring your cows, that'll help a lot. That's actually really, that is actually really good feedback. Yeah, no, thank you. I didn't yeah, realize that. I've had trouble understanding you. I've had to ask you that. That's your legs. Lightning wrench. Okay. So today's time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's like the night of the Tessa. I'm going to turn to the I don't know if there is. We're going to be meeting with the friends group to look at the management agreement and the rental fee schedule. And I, to tell you the truth, I don't know if there's anything in the management agreement that talks about buildings and grounds. Right yeah. now, we have um, one of the road crew that's kind of mowing some of this area. And then in the back, we have the edible garden people that we're looking at um, maybe helping out with some of some of that maintenance. But we haven't we haven't said anything okay. final, I, final, I, final. I, I, I say what <coughs> offers here. I have a DR building restaurant, which is good for a stacking expanding. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Reed, can you introduce yourself so Katie has your name? I've been feeding her. Okay. As people come in, I've been okay. sending her okay. texts. I don't want to step good. on the front group. Yeah. If they're well, I would, I would say in lieu of having a management yes. agreement in place, this isn't going to go away anytime soon. I would encourage the board to take Reed up on this offer. Uh, Alfie, are you catching all this? Are you, you able to hear what Reed was saying? Is he even on the uh, I am here, but I can't really understand real well what people are saying because if there's such a background. Hey, Reed can come over and sit in the, in the, in the Basically, line. Reed has offered to uh, do an initial mowing for the season because the, the grass and weeds are, have gotten pretty high. He's got some equipment that can make take care of it in short order. Um, so the board is leaning towards taking him up on this very generous offer to do it as a one-time only thing. But after that, do you think we'd be able to arrange to have Ed Rowell come over on a regular basis and do the mowing? Yes, I believe we can, particularly around the building itself. Exactly. And down around the field, down around in the field and near the septic system, all that would be too much for a little mower, but. Right, we got some equipment that can handle those parts of it as well. Um, and he would set up the initial pattern of, of where Ed would need to mow. Okay, so is he is he donating his time for this? Yes. I can talk. I can talk to Ed about it. He <laughs> have some ideas. Um, I, I I have to say now that I've said what I've said that I probably couldn't do it until 
sometime between the 10th and 15th of July. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's the, have you, could you also, you know, Jamie, because yes. I talked to her about them doing some mowing right. out here. So maybe it could be coordinated, but I haven't put it on an agenda yet. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to get into their territory, but uh, it seems to me there's a very clear line mm -hmm. between the septic mound and the gas tank. You can sort of draw a line mm -hmm. and all their plantings are yeah. below that. Yeah, and I also just, so this would be a one-time thing because we don't have the management agreement done. Cliff, is there, or Scott, is there anything in the management agreement that talks about what we're talking about? It talks about the, the friends group coordinating with the select board upon um, maintenance issues okay. and helping to address them. So what we're imagining is it is the responsibility of the town unless the town says to the friends group we want you to manage that okay but we are willing to help you manage that okay and then if it becomes well we want you guys to do all of that then that's another discussion we have to right have. i just didn't want to step on those yeah, yeah. 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 It's good. yeah. okay so you're gonna maybe coordinate with um I'll coordinate yeah. with Jamie and yeah. Matt Rowell. Yeah, okay. And uh, I'll, I'll do it by the 15th. Of uh, July. Like no later. But don't do it if it's 90 degrees, please. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> and don't do it this Wednesday. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, town meeting. Yeah. Thank no, you. Thanks. Yeah, Thank that you. special. Isn't this special? Oh, it's a special election. Special election. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Ray. Related to that, too, um, we noticed as well. Our, our, we need to capture a to do, Katie. Uh, we need to get Andy to um, the plywood that we use to protect the windows in the wintertime has fallen over oh. and it's exposed to the weather. So that needs to be tied Where up. Is that out back? It's out back. Okay. And it's, it's normally under the overhang, but it looks like it has fallen. And so it needs to get put back, and we might have to put some kind of brace against it to keep it from falling again. Yeah. Is there no, there's no place to store it? I don't know if it would fit into the storage room back there or not. Mm -hmm. It'll stay pretty dry on the porch. But is that where it fell off of? So we need to like put some kind of a- We might have to, thing? you're right, we might have to have That's something to do with it. Yeah. It's quite a pile. Yeah, we don't want it to fall on somebody. We need it to be mm -hmm. upright. Yep. Okay. All right, you're ready to move on? Um, we have Sandra in the queue somewhere. I thought, oh, there she is. We need to review the um, treasury report and the billing for tax collection report. Hi. Sorry, so, we kept you. Oh, no, that's okay. The um, May treasurer's report is the report you're looking at. Does anyone have any questions about that? Call it up, Sandy. Getting in all this technology working. Look at that, that owl thing when it looks at you. It looks like an owl. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It's really working. Yeah. Okay, you want to start with the May 21 Treasurer's Report, Sandra? Sure, that would be that fine. The May 21 Treasurer's Report was predictive of ending the year on a positive note with fund balances in both the highway and general funds. Uh, the highway revenues were, uh, were static at, as of May, we did not expect any other revenues to come in. We did expect more expenses naturally. Um, and we projected, as I said, a, a highway fund balance, which uh, once the year is closed would be rolled over into the highway capital equipment fund. Um, as far as the general government is concerned, uh, Revenues continue to come in primarily delinquent taxes, interest, and um, recording fees, zoning fees, etc. 
And we also, the May report was predictive that we would end the year uh, having spent less than our revenues were. So I did run a pre preliminary June report and, um, and it's, the year did land, although this is an un, all these are unaudited balances, the year did land with both um, general government and highway funds being in the black. And, and that is, that's good. <laughs> highway fund looks like it's uh, roughly $152,000 in the black. Now we're talking about June at this point because basically I, I'm just about to close our year. That $152,000 will get rolled over into the capital equipment fund to uh, primary, to firstly pay uh, the lease on the 2019 West Star, which will come due in January, 2022. Um, the reason for that- We're still having money left over even after that, right? Yes, 152,000 will go in, there's 16,000 in there now. Um, the reason for this overage is there are multiple reasons, uh, mostly having to do with grant monies coming in as well as one additional state aid to highway payment that was related to COVID that we wouldn't see again. It was an unbudgeted revenue of uh, 42, almost $43,000. Uh, general government, I mean, we just spent a little less than what we budgeted for. Um, I don't really, actually we spent a little more than we budgeted for due to COVID and other uh, technical issues having to do with um, equipment and so forth in order to meet the needs of continuing to do municipal business under the pandemic protocols. We also had um, the election expenses were, mo were more than we anticipated. However, many of them were reimbursed by the Secretary of State's office. Um, we're, we look like, again, this is an unaudited balance. It looks like we're going to roll over into the general fund balance, $36,000 um, in the general fund. So we ended the year. Uh, it looks like we're going to end the year very well. When the auditors come in, they will make some tweaks to that, of which that's what they do. But we're we're again in the black in both of those categories. Any questions? It, it's a very good report. We did very well. Sandra, when are the auditors coming? They're coming the 15th and the 16th of July. So I have okay. updated the delinquent tax report. That's this report, of course, is as of May 31st, 2021, but we are now at June 28th. Um, why don't we just take a quick look at that? That is also um, a very positive report at this point. Our delinquent taxes for the 2020 tax year, which is the FY21 um, fiscal year, are 6,000 or $6,700. Of the, that's how much is uncollected. And Cliff, do you have the updated version that we can look at? No, 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 no. Here's the problem. Yeah, yeah. I, the, this, is a, this is a tech problem that, that we should address outside, but let me say what just happened. I tried to print the PDF and it was printing, yeah, right. it was printing like the upper most left corner only, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. that so I opened it in Word, which is where you just got your, right. Right. so anyway. Yeah, I don't, sometimes they do strange things. I don't know, Cliff, if there's a hot tip out later you can offer us for when that happens. So no, no, do that, that was my solution. 
Okay, I've got another solution. Just give me a minute to do this. You don't have to do it now, though, because it's it's a it's what we need. What I don't understand is what's going on when it. When <coughs> Yeah, we'll have, we can adjust that in a separate discussion. What yeah. I want to do right now is pull Sandra's document up on the screen. And right, right, right. And I, and I did, as a board document, I was able to print it. That's so weird. Wasn't that the one right there? It won't format properly because it's meant to be a PDF and that forces it to open in Word when we open it from the drive. But wasn't the, word, wasn't the PDF still there? I can't pivot the document so it's readable. Everybody have to turn their head sideways to the yeah. tape. Yeah. yeah, that's what happens when I try to open it at home. Oh, and that's not because I opened it in Word. That's no, just a stupid document. Okay. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to go here and download this. Come on, computer. You can do it. Now we get down to the gist of what we want to talk about. <laughs> and we can pivot this. We can all stand on right on our side. There we go. All right. Now let me pull that up in the screen share. Take it away, Sandra. So we have six delinquent parcels, as you can see, in goldenrod are parcels where the taxpayer intended to pay the bill in full but paid the bill after the next bill came out and so there is a delinquency as the result of that um, the parcels highlighted in white require no action at this time. The first parcel, parcel number two, will be paid in full in July. This person is on a payment plan for $105 a month. Uh, the last parcel has, uh, I've spoken with the attorney today, that parcel, the last, the last parcel number six, it's in white, it's in a white band, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, she's telling us, I think she's working her way to the one she really wants us to focus on. So the, the parcel in the white band, it does not appear to have been redeemed, which means that the tax sale will go through. There will be new owners. Uh, we will get their names in the next couple of days and before I would, I would recommend to the board that before you would send this to collections, you'd give the new owners a, an opportunity to pay these taxes um, in full. I do, I, I know who the owners are and I suspect they will be very happy to make that payment in full as soon as they get uh, the deed. Uh, the remaining band- Sandra. Sandra. Yeah. I didn't mean to yell at you. Uh, yeah, right. Isn't the isn't the tax actually paid as part of the closing process? Uh, the tax sale was for uh, 2019 and 2018 taxes. These are the 2020 taxes. So the tax bills that were sent out last, last April. This amount represents that uh, that tax plus the penalty and interest that has accrued since September 2020. So the tax sale was for the previous year. And this has been the court 
of that this parcel has taken over the last four or five years. Um, so no, these were not taken care of at that time. That, I mean, they weren't due when the tax sale um, took place, which was, June, which was June 23rd, 2020. Tax bills for uh, the 2020 tax year went out in August, 2020. So that amount is the result of those tax bills, the 2020 tax bills. Okay. Uh, what about number five? Number five is a troublesome parcel. This, uh, this person, the taxpayer has had no contact and, and has made no payments at all. Uh, mail would seemingly have gotten to the taxpayer. I send out the bills and the warrant um, every month. I happen to have an email for this taxpayer and I have reached out by email. This person, as far as I know, has not been on our delinquent tax list before. Um, and this is, I, I would say, I, you know, I don't, I would say this is a senior member of our community. I am perplexed. I have uh, reached out to people hoping to discover someone who would know this taxpayer and who could um, do a personal reach out. And I haven't discovered anyone yet. This looks like a parcel under our policy that would go to collections. I so, have exhausted all means at, of contacting this person. Have we, do we know, you said this person is a senior. Um, it would be nice to know that the person is okay, for starters. Um, but you said no mail has come back. No mail has come back. And the person hasn't been like, ill and maybe moved to a nursing home and the house is just sitting there. We don't know any of that. Right? That house is, as far as I, as I know, as far as the listers know, that house is not for sale. Um, it's concerning it's to have somebody like that not respond. Yeah, actually it is concerning. And um, I very reluctantly encourage this. I, I, I reluctantly send this to collections. It meets all of our policy for doing so. Um, so I would say to the select board, um, this is maybe an area of compassion. If we, if you as a board can go and see if someone in the community knows this taxpayer and can get their attention or at least find out what their situation is. Um, I think we this, have, this does not feel comfortable to me. There feels like there's a backstory. And um, I'm wondering sometimes if somebody's living alone and they got ill and they're in a nursing home, somebody could be taking in the mail and not opening it. I mean, we don't know. And I would, I think I would feel more comfortable knowing that the person is okay, for one thing. Yes, I would as well. I mean, uh, it, it is the only parcel that meets the criteria for a tax sale. I, I just think there could be more that we could do on a personal level. Uh, oh, if we could discover what that situation is. Now, this person could be very cantankerous and just decided not to pay. And that's, of course, always a possibility, but that's really kind of an outlier uh, situation. And I wouldn't expect that here. That, you know, and if that's the situation, okay, but I would just feel more comfortable knowing this person is okay. Does, you know? May I ask, is there anyone on the board or in the audience who knows that uh, this taxpayer? Any, the is anybody out there? <laughs> Well, the audience for the folks in the Zoom room, the audience is just you all. Right. I, see. I thought there was another list of people. They can't see this. Um, they can't see this docu document. 
Everybody can see it. So yeah, the people who are here in the hall with us, Sandra, have all left. So it's just the board members who are in the building right now. So the only, only other people in attendance are people in the Zoom audience. I think everybody should just put on their thinking cap and see, you know, if the person is cantankerous and whatever, that's okay. But let's see the community if we can figure out if the person's okay. Uh, I that that is my recommendation here before that that's what i think it's on a blackberry oh on blackberry hill that property's been sold i think sandra it has i think so if that's who i'm thinking it is i can say the name because i think it's important that the name be said so we can discover this joanne eiley uh, there was a property sold up there, was, but yeah. I didn't. But I didn't think it was hers. I talked to Jan Olson, and it's it's still in her name. And of Chapin, yeah, it's at the end of Chapin where it turned into part of Blackberry Ridge development out there. All right. Well, we don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, but if somebody has some information and knows the person's okay, that would be good to know. Or if it's been, seems like if it's been sold though, it would be something would be coming to the town to record in the land records. It, it, it would, and uh, the town clerk has not indicated that there is a transfer of record nor have the listers. Albert, if you know something, you can call me tomorrow morning. Or email okay. me. Well, I can call you regardless. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, I don't I don't know a All lot, right. but it just seems like I know that name and it seems like that place was sold, but I may be mistaken. Because a, a lot of those properties have changed hands out there in the last couple, three years. It wasn't it it wasn't there's another person with that same last name um, that he lives right there too as well. Nicholas. Is it Nick? Uh, yeah, I would just pull I just pulled up the grand list. Um, I mean, what, what befuddles me is that any time a property is sold, the the process, best practice is that Sandra gets a chance to report on whether there are taxes due. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, maybe it's kind of maybe it's kind of in, in works, but let's move on. And if anybody has any helpful information, so the um. So back to that document, you don't need to pull it up. We do have a three, I have spent four or five dollars already attempting to collect these small amounts. I would suggest um, at this point, it would probably be more cost effective to abate these amounts through the board of abatement. Um, I, I don't really can't say that they're going to be paid. And to send a 55 cent stamp ink paper uh, month after month on these bills uh, seems to be a losing proposition. We should have a board of abatement hearing and do like we do it the way we, you know, the process that we usually do. Mm -hmm. that, that would be my recommendation. But of course, that is up to the select board to decide if that's the course we want to take. Otherwise, our delinquent taxes look very, um, hey, very positive this year. We, well, the numbers speak for themselves. Who's, who's barking out there? You want to speak? That's Mr. Ranger. Ranger's barking. Oh, <laughs> do you have something you'd like to contribute to the meeting? Oh, hmm. he wants to get the new kitten. He's agitated oh, no. by it. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, the delinquent tax report. And does anyone have any questions about that? No, I read your, I read your memo. Yeah, so thank well you. Done. It thank was you. very good. Thank, thank you, Sandra. Thank, thank you. you, that's an impressive When number. When will we, um, will we want to talk about end of fiscal year stuff sooner than the last meeting in July, maybe on July 12th, do we need to do anything? Uh, 
You don't need to do a thing. The auditors will be in. I will, I'm 90%, 95% prepared for the audit at this point. I have to close the um, fiscal year in the module. Uh, that has to happen. I last the top. If the auditors aren't coming until the 15th and the 16th, there's probably nothing to really talk about on the 12th. I can present the unaudited June balance sheet and the um, final numbers. I think highway is going to sit tight. I don't think the highway is going to have any more expenditures and they certainly aren't going to have any more revenues. Uh, the general government is going to change a titch. There will be a few more uh, revenues coming in and probably no more expenditures. So, um, if anything, general government is going to look a little better than it does now. The balance sheet, I did run a, a preliminary balance sheet and, you know, we're just, we're, we're going to, we're going to close this, this uh, fiscal year in excess of $400,000 in our general fund. That's what it looks like to me at this time. Does that, and, include, does that include highway or just general? That's the general fund. The highway is excluded from that. And of course the highway would, looks like we're going to roll over $152,000 into the highway capital equipment fund. And my only word of um, my call for the select board to consider is, I mean, that's a nice chunk of change and it should be, you're going to use it wisely, naturally. But every year, it's just simply not going to be like this. And um, one other way to um, to be able to fund our capital equipment expenses is to, uh, in addition to these rollovers, which some are large and some are not, and some years we're in the negative, uh, another way to deal with that would be to put into the highway budget itself a line item and a, an appropriation for that capital equipment fund. Um, this is, I think, a real, this is an outlier from what I can see in other years. I haven't seen anything uh, like this roll over into the highway capital equipment fund. And, uh, and it, was an, it, it was an unusual year, of course, but um, it, you know, next year there might be nothing. There might be three thousand dollars to roll over. So I thought for the board might be to consider, uh, including, yeah, including in the highway budget, a set amount to go into that fund so that you always have what you need when you need it. Other than that, we look. Are you saying, Sandra? So you're saying a line item, a line item, rather than just you taking what is if we're lucky enough to have some roll over. Yeah, it's more it's more of a planning tool than yeah. uh, than a hit or miss uh, than than good luck. So it, as a as we appropriate say for uh, the town hall um, to, to maintain the town hall or to maintain the town office or to appropriate to um, the conservation commission, the highway would have a line similar to those lines that would be appropriation to the capital equipment fund. And I think a conversation with Toby and Alfred um, to see what that number might, might want to be. I, this could be the year to really be able to dig your teeth into um, a very a, a real comfortable capital equipment plan that could lower our payments, which would then offset that additional line item in the budget. I think there's an opportunity here that you haven't had before that, that you could capitalize on if the board and um, Toby and Alfred thought that would be wise. Sandra, I filled out a model many years ago. I don't ago. know who's who is talking to me. I, I can't see you. It's Rick. It's Rick, oh, hi. Hey. I built out a model for the school and I've done it for buildings years ago that, you know, looked forward and built, and in this case, it was for building infrastructure. So it looked 130 years and it, and it let you play with, and it was built around capital budgeting. So you actually capitalized depreciation every year. I mean, a physical depreciation on equipment so that 
you funded a flat fund every year, a flat amount, and you never bonded. You had enough money based on the, the retirement cycles to be able to do it. And that's what you're saying. We might be able to modify that for the equipment so that, you know, we can, and that's fully adjustable. You can model with it. You can put in any estimated life information. It's all, it, account, it accounts for inflation, everything. So maybe it's something that I, I immediately, I was funny, you brought this up and I, when I heard that number, I was about to ask that question, whether we should consider using this. This is a windfall of cash that you put in, you don't actually, you know, we would actually use it to spread across all the equipment, but use it to reduce the annual contribution every year. And it gradually you build that up to where, I mean, you have one fixed number and it's very small, it's been based on the total life depreciation of all the equipment and operating expense. So yeah, I mean, I yeah. think that's what you're saying. Well, Toby has um, the, Highway budget has hovered in that one hundred thousand um, dollar range for capital equipment purchases. So that's the combination of all of the loans, and they so they have uh, you know as one piece of equipment goes on and another goes off, another piece of equipment goes on, and there's been a uh, and so they've been able to keep that number fairly consistent over time. Toby, Toby's got that pretty well dialed in, but, but you don't, what you don't have dialed in is a consistent amount of money going into your capital equipment fund in order to make down payments to keep those lease and, and or purchase uh, payments consistent. So the budget stays relatively stable and this, could be opportunity looking at this cash of funds. Um, this might be the year that you can really um, put pencil to paper. And uh, I know I, I, I suspect that Toby would very much uh, appreciate engaging in that conversation. And I, and this makes sense. Sandra? Uh, yes. Hear me very well. So I think we, you know, Cindy had to make wanted to make a comment, but we're way behind schedule. So this is a really good conversation, and I think we will keep that in mind when we're doing budgeting in the future. But I think we need to keep things moving. So um, Sharon, did you have something? I I had a question about whether whether I was missing something. Isn't this a, isn't Sandra is making an excellent point that we need to remember when we're budgeting. Right, not yeah, that. right, yeah. So I don't want to get into this too much tonight. Cindy, did you have a quick comment? Because we need to keep moving. Um, yes. Well, you I, your, no, I'm not. I had typed it into the to the um, box there. We saved the money for a capital fund with the elementary school, but I think we lost all that with Act 46. So well, I think saving money is a good policy, and it's what I think we should do as a town and as, as families. Uh, or, um, it didn't pan out. Yeah, no, but it didn't because they didn't follow number one, and then the agency of education came in and took it. Yeah, I so don't this think, is different. Yeah, this hopefully, is, hopefully it's different. This is right, this yeah. is way different. If this is held by the town, I don't see that happening. But you're right; that did happen, and it was not very good. Yeah, they were punished for being fiscally smart. Okay, so let's move on, Sandra. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Two, two more points, Denise. I'm gonna get caught for a walk. Okay, quickly. Uh, we just a reminder that uh, Nimric's annual contract needs to be signed. Um, if you could take a look at that, when does it have? When, it, when it, does it need? To be signed? It should be signed uh, tonight. Uh, so I think you have that. But um, that their their fiscal year runs from the middle of June to the middle of June. So we owe them that money in this fiscal year, and that contract comes with that invoice. So the invoice is on order because that is part of our FY21 budget. It's just that their fiscal year does not run in complete concert with ours. Um, did, you, did you look at the contract? Did anything change? No, it's all the same. It's all the same. 
Okay. And did the did the cost go up any? Uh no. Base, I mean, it, they quoted five thousand dollars, and that's what the um, and that's what the invoice came in at five thousand dollars. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's to have um, Cindy, right? Cindy from Nemrick. Uh, Cynthia, yes. For the auditor thing. Oh no, her hourly rate stayed the same. Oh, okay. So this is just a Nemrick contract to. This, provide us with the software and all that, right? Yes, this is their support contract, correct, for the modules that we use. I think we use eight of their modules. So they um, fix them and they work out any wrinkles we have using them and any mistakes anyone has made using them uh, that we can't fix, they fix. Yeah, well, we're gonna be, and if you could stay on for a couple more agenda items, I will add this. We're going to be doing a special meeting with the road crew on Wednesday. So I can put this on our agenda for Wednesday to do that first thing um, and get it out, get it out of the way and, and get it signed. Can we, right. can we have it with us on Wednesday to, to sign? Yeah, I can print. Well, can you, it, I guess I, I, I still it recover. Is, is it in the Google Doc file? It might be. I think she said yes. Katie said yes. We're not looking at you anymore, Sandra. Uh, that's okay. There it is. Oh, yeah. Well, do you see it? I'm screen sharing it now. Can you see it? <clears throat> oh, Katie's, Katie's sharing it. Can, can you see it? I'm seeing I it. I can see it. Uh, now we can see it. Now we can. Okay, there it is. Yeah. All right, well, we'll do this on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and did you have anything else, Sandra? Because we need to keep. Well, the Sandra needs to authorize. Payment pending the signing, so that all we're doing on Wednesday night is signing it. Uh, you have board orders, and that check is in the board orders. So when you tell me, I can send those orders. We can wait till Wednesday for that. Okay, let's do that. Uh, the other, the other item that the board needs to look at is the life and disability agreements, the joinder agreements that are um, need to be signed. This is the new um, the new vendor of the life and disability policies that cover the staff that uh, VLCT has left Lincoln National and has uh, joined with a Minnesota National Life or so, something to that effect. I'm sorry, the name escapes me. MNLI is what it is. Hickok and Boardman are the brokers on this, and uh, we. It's the same coverage for less price. That was the deal that the LCT cut for the towns. And we need to sign uh, those contracts tonight. So if the board could authorize Denise to do it. What I saw, what I looked at, it looked like they were asking for your signature and the premium is going down, correct? The premium, premium is going down. They asked for an authorized signer and the board hasn't authorized me to sign that and I'm happy to sign it and send it away. I make okay. a motion that we authorize Sandra to sign the sign, sign the what is sign the thing we're just talking about. It <laughs> it's a joinder agreement with the new insurance company. I guess I thought you would sign that as our personnel person and our treasurer. I didn't realize the board had to have anything really to do much with it. I'll well, sign it. Okay, are you ready to vote? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, moving right along now that we're like way behind. Um, we couldn't the restrictions that we had for the town crew at the previous meeting that we had because it wasn't 
We weren't ready for that and it wasn't on the agenda. So I would make a motion that we lift restrictions for daily health checks and the mask mandate at the town garage. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, ARPA funds. I think I told I asked Sandra to stay on. She didn't. No, she picked up. It's not, it doesn't work good with. What's she couldn't, I don't think she can hear me. Maybe I need to sit closer. Uh, she is, she was having problems hearing Rick as well. Yeah, so I'm wondering and if there's something on her end. I had to and yell. Her, her internet connection was flaky because she was, we were getting a lot of digital corruption. Yeah, and then I know over the weekend when I talked to her, she her, basically her internet went down and she thinks maybe the heat and the heat has something to do with it. Well, you know, one of the things that we should talk about um, is having, is there, is, I mean, I, I would say absent a reason that Sandra can't be here, you know, both for Sandra and the new town clerk. Yeah, maybe we should ask them to attend in person. I think we need to have them attend in person. Yeah, I agree. That's much, um, this was just a nightmare. Right. Attend in person and, and, you know, for communication, I don't think it's too much to ask to have them attend every meeting unless we don't need them. Yeah, it might be a lot for Sandra to, I don't know that we need Sandra to attend every meeting. I think it would be good for her to attend like she used to. Yeah. When we were over there, when we were talking about the treasurer's report and things like that. I don't know that there would be a need really for her to attend every meeting. Uh, well, what I'm, what I'm really saying though is, is flip the presumption. So the presumption that she's here and then we can say, you know what, there's nothing we're going to need you for rather than than mm -hmm. you know having to schedule oh and not having her here because if we're going into ARPA funds and, and anyway that's a, that's not something we, you, we talk about well, tonight but and yeah the ARPA fund thing we kind of already really talked about it earlier so I'm, I think we could even skip that yeah because we really talked about it yeah earlier and we need more information and all right, um, the next so, one. And I think that we, we said it, but I want to make sure we've captured what I heard. And this is really a Katie for the minutes that, Denise, you're you're doing all this legwork to see if we can find someone. Yeah, we just need to find someone. Okay. Yeah, that's and then goal. And then sooner rather than later, we're all going to have to be alert to the what if. Right. And I will see if we can, if, if we can go over, it's a, that's a great possibility. If we have enough information to right. actually put in something. Um, and actually, let me take the CARPA stuff a step further. Um, so love that you're doing the homework. Um, if we can't, if you can't find somebody and we have to post to just start moving forward until and hire somebody until one of the accounting firms or somebody else takes it on, mm -hmm. then I want to suggest that we either delegate to two of us, me and Denise, um, to take ownership of developing something and putting it on front porch form or whatever, or that we say, Denise, it's all you, just run with it. But you may say, no, I want somebody else. Yeah, to well, I think I'll have more information by Wednesday. Okay, I just don't want to have to I don't scramble want to have for an emergency meeting. No, and I think if we don't know by Wednesday, if we got somebody to do it, then okay. we do. Then, yeah. we'll, then we'll take it offline because we shouldn't have to meet to. Yeah, all right. That's good. Yeah. You both have a good combination of skills to do that. Yeah. Like that. yeah. All right. So the next item, um, and I didn't know this, and Cindy um, alerted me to the fact that there is a recent traffic study, Cindy, Cindy Gardner Morris, that um, oh, there, there is, in fact, a recent <laughs> traffic study. I didn't know it because she sent it to me. So um, in my queries on this, I sent Todd Eaton. Um, is he local in New York? He, he never was Todd's been to the RPC. I see. I heard the traffic cuts. I don't know. So, isn't Todd? No, Todd I may be wrong. I no, Todd, I think Todd Eaton was actually the one who came to some of our meetings when we were going around town. That sounds kind of familiar, familiar, actually. Yeah. Maybe on road study stuff. Maybe. But anyways, so I sent. Him an email because I want what is the 
Now that we have this traffic study, what is the process that we have to go through? Do we, you know, what do we, who do we have to ask? Who do we, what do we do next? To ask for what, say, complete your sentence. To, if we're looking at reducing the speed limit on the county road, okay. what is the next step? I, the first step in my mind was the traffic study, which I didn't know it. Cindy sent it to me that there, it's already been done. I didn't even know it. So I contacted Todd Eaton, who I believe is Vermont Local Roads or something. This is the information. This is the person that Ashley Andrews said I should ask. So I sent him an email asking him, what is the process? What is the next? What are the next steps that the board has to do? Okay. So that's just really all I wanted to say tonight is it's in the process. Good. That, I mean, typically with those traffic studies, I mean, when I did that. They're impossible to read. Well, they're, they're well, I can teach you to read them. And I, in fact, I try to get the data, I'll put it in a simpler form. That, they didn't do that with this. I can do that. Oh. I've done hundreds of these. If you, um, I mean, usually in the, with, you do a traffic study, it's usually done on the radar. Yeah, I think it was. Nine, well, this looks like it's done on traffic counters. Oh, they, these are two counters. Like on the yeah, the reason you can't, you've got to do 100 non-consecutive, well, non, what they call platoon cars okay. that are not like we're bunched together, so one's controlling the speed of the other. And then you take the 85th percentile. Yeah, and that is the safe driving speed of the road. And that's what, and then you're only really allowed to be, well, you're only supposed to deviate so many miles per hour mm -hmm. below or above that speed. Right. And that, they, I did you know, look if you try to lower that way down to about 85th, it'll get, I mean, the state really pushes back. People will so ignore the state, is the state the one that has to say, because this is really a road, this is a class, I guess it's a class two, right? It's not a class one because the state doesn't maintain it. It's maintained by the town of Calais, and it's not clear. It's, I class, don't know it's class two, Denise. You're, you're right, class two. It's, it's a class, thank you, Alfred. I got something right. Um, so, you know, do we get to say, or does the state have to say, we, yeah, you can do this? So I'm just check on it. The process. Usually what happens is you don't, I'll have to verify that with the state. Yeah. But what happens is it kind of tends to take your legal bearing down because you turn, people are going to drive the same, what they perceive to be the safe driving speed of that road. So they're going to, you can change the speed limit. You're just turning them into criminals. They're still going to drive. If you set a 50 mile an hour, 80, you know, 80 percentile road, 35, people are still going to drive. It's what I know. They say that people drive according to the conditions and the and shape it is of the road. True. We, we did traffic, I did traffic counts mm -hmm. with counters that even proved it, you know, and that's that's a kind of a national standard. Right. Well, right. So I didn't really want to get into the whole big discussion tonight. I just wanted to say where, where we are in the process and we need mm -hmm. more information. Well, yeah, we do. We yeah. Do. I, May I say something? Oh, who's speaking, please? Oh, hey, Maureen. Maureen, yeah, yeah, hi. I, I'm just saying, if you don't change the speed limit, I just, can you put up a no passing sign by my house? Because there's four driveways and an intersection. And when they get by my driveway, they're passing. I see it every single day. So you know if they're... 50 miles an hour, they're going way more than 50 miles an hour when they pass because I can hear them rev up. And traffic uh -huh. is getting heavier on this road because of COVID getting over, summer, out of staters coming to camps, people building. It's scary. It's, I think it's, it's everywhere. It's happening I mean, everywhere. It, it's, you, know, you have to run across the road to get to your mailbox in theory. Yeah, and I well, realize that changing it to 40 is going to change a lot of things, especially if there's no law enforcement. You're going to have to have enforcement to come up to slow these people down. Well, let's see where we let's see where we get with what we're where the process is and what we have to do, and then if we can't do what we're looking to do, then we can talk about signage. I mean, yeah. I don't I don't know what the footage is from. <laughs> intersections and not just not just not just signage i mean i would actually 
I mean, I kind of don't care what people think is the feel when they're driving is the safe speed. There's a lot of other things that drivers are not considering that are on our little right. roads. I know there's kids and animals and dogs I mean, and cat people and um, and so yes and yeah and and if so anyway so I know we'll we'll have this consensus con right. discussion yeah. now you now you all know where I'm coming from yeah yeah no I think I think they're on the same page yeah. yeah that there's more to consider here than just what yeah okay so the road is twisty probably people aren't going to drive as fast but if you drive that road every day you are going to drive fast because you know the road. Right, but that doesn't take into account the walkers and the dogs. Right. I mean, when I drive down here, I often see bikers and people, as you say, trying to get to your, your mailbox. There's dogs, sometimes there's horses. Right. But all right, so let's move along then. I think we're, we'll find out, we'll get some more information. We're getting there. Hmm. Yeah. Say what? We'll talk. We'll, we're going to talk more. We have more time. Yeah. 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 Well, I think when we get more information about the process, then we can talk more about it. Yeah, because people will have opinions. Yeah. All right. The, um, Liz, can you call up the ordinance, please? And I don't know. Actually, maybe easier if uh, Katie pulls it up. Okay. And I didn't, I put this on mostly to get it on people's radar because I know people don't always have time to look at everything before a meeting. <clears throat> so let me tell you what we've done. We met on, what do we meet? We met June, I got it right here. We met on June 4th and we met on June 22nd. Um, Jim Barron sent us a draft ordinance to, to start with the group. And it was really, it was really productive. We got a lot done quickly. So um, I put it on the agenda tonight to put it on the board's radar that we should have, um, if everybody could please look at it, and we could have our, according to the adoption process, we have to hold a, a regular or special meeting and notice it and all that stuff. So I'm looking to do that on July 12th. That's just on the ordinance. Right, that's that's the first step is to put it on a, a regular <laughs> select board agenda, either a regular or special. We don't want to be special. They hold a public hearing because there might be people when they see this on the agenda that come and they have a different opinion, and that's okay. They have a different opinion. Um, and that starts the clock ticking. So once we have this public hearing, it's uh, no, it is. If no petition, uh, the ordinance, the adopted ordinance is entered into the minutes of the select board meeting and posted in at least five places. Um, and within 14 days of adoption by the select board, right. the full text or concise summary of the ordinance must be published in a newspaper. And you can see on the screen the information right. has to be included. In the yeah, I think I sent, did I send this to everybody? Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I sent it to the working group. But if you could please, by mm -hmm. next meeting, review the documents. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, then the answer to Rick's question is the ordinance becomes effective 60 days after the date 60, of its adoption. Well, it says within 40 days of the adoption, 5% of the voters may submit a petition to try to, you know, not have us to rescind the ordinance, basically. Right. Yeah. Um, I doubt that would happen here with this one, but you never know. So that's if you could find if you could please look at that document. The, the working group has Cindy, are, do you agree the working group has signed off on this? Yes, it looks to me like everybody was in agreement from the emails. I'm just going by the emails that were copied to the whole group, but I didn't hear anybody making any complaints. I am gonna reach out specifically to Elizabeth and Wilson because they wanted to see get one more chance to comment on the final document and they can also attend the public hearing as well but um that was yeah okay um elizabeth elizabeth perry thank you and wilson hughes and wilson hughes the town's animal control officers right we sent our final document to jim with just a couple of little things that we wanted to 
change or leave in there, and he, he was fine. He blessed it. Can I ask one question? Mm -hmm. I could, is, 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 there, is there some latitude in here? I mean, everybody that has animals has animals got out at some point or another. So yes, it's in there. We just want to make sure that we're not. And that's what I'm going to be looking at too. And I was a repeat. This is for repeat offenders. Yeah, that's good. I'm there is a chart in there, and there is the, the animal control officer, as we learn, has discretion. Okay. Good. Um, and, and there's like a first offense, second, third, fourth, fifth kind of thing. And yes, everybody's animals get out. Yeah, it, it always, it always happens. And responsible animal owners <laughs> will we'll go get them okay. and fix where they got out. And because we did talk about this in our we did I mean, in our so, working group. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, yeah. even in the board meeting, we just talked. What's that? Yeah, what's that? Fight? It's you know, it's some of it is judgment, mm -hmm. and the animal you know, control officers have that ability. And so that answers the question I had about whether there were people who have large animals <coughs> on the working group, and it sounds like you definitely had some. Yeah, I checked in with Charlotte because she's on the other side of town. We didn't know what was going on. And she, okay, yeah. And Nick, Nick Ward has horses and they have cows on their property. Um, and I have horses and, and have had other yeah. animals in the past. So yeah, that was definitely, I think why a lot of us were involved in that. We wanted to make sure it, it isn't trying to get your regular, you know, small farmer or large farmer that has the odd animal get out once in a while and deals with it. This is for somebody who's been having problems for over a year. It looks like over three years and is just, the animals aren't being treated in a safe way. So that okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. This sounds great. Cliff? Yeah, yeah, the, only I think thing I wanted, the only thing I wanted to add is as the select board members are reviewing the document, please also review the remedial um, direction yeah. template because yeah. it's an important part of this equation as well. Yep, yeah, good point. And both of those documents yeah. are in the folder yep, from I tonight's see, meeting. I saw them both, yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Okay, next item also about roads. Share, Katie. Thank you. Um, also about roads is, okay, so John's not here, but back when we were doing um, ancient roads, we had the Town Highway 7, which is was not an ancient road, um, but Gary Schultz has resurfaced with his request for us to discontinue the town highway seven piece that's mainly just on his property. And there's a process and I'm, I put it on the agenda again, just to bring it to everybody's attention. We're not gonna do anything tonight. There's nothing to do tonight, but I just feel like if I bring it, put it on the agenda then people will pay attention. And where is that property? Cause I wasn't- It's on West, West County Road. Road. It's, <laughs> well, you know, where, you know where I live. Yep. Okay, so you go down that big hill <clears throat> onto Duger. Yeah, take a left on Duger, which is West County Road. And his house is the first driveway on the right. Okay. So we're gonna have to do a site visit. We have to walk the property. And, and so there's a whole bunch of steps. And so I asked Jim to send us all the steps so we know what we have to do. Um, and I think we should, Gary sends an email, but I think I'm going to ask him to send us an official letter with what he's requesting. That's and good. not just, yeah, that's not just a, an email. That sounds a good process. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That that was it on this for tonight. We just need to set up a walk. Right. We'll do that. Right. right. We'll have to do all that. Right. We'll have to do a site visit, walk the road, when it's not 90 degrees, maybe. Okay, next. Um, town hall usage policy ended on the 12th, right? Okay, that's the site board's pleasure. That's what we'll do. And friends of town hall management agreement, will you, will friends be ready on the 26th, do you think, or will they be ready on the 12th? Um, so I know we talked about a special meeting because it was going to take a while to hammer through. Right. The documents they requested a special meeting. right so do we still um, do that we definitely need to have a meeting that sets aside a fair amount of time to discuss i don't think we can do that later yeah um 
whatever is the board's pleasure, the friends will make themselves available. Yeah, we're we in the process of um, trying to figure out when we're going to have our next meeting, either this week or next week, I think it is, um, so that we can take our next round of edits to those documents mm -hmm. and be pretty close to ready to go. Um, the 12th <laughs> might be pushing it. I would recommend we focus on the usage policy for the 12th. Yeah. And then if we're in that position, do so at that meeting, we can present the management agreement, rental agreement, just like we're doing with this ordinance. The select board would have some time to review it. Then we get together and have a, that special meeting. Yeah, okay. But that's 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 make his plan to me. And yeah, and I want yeah, special meeting or regular meeting. We all one, we already said we would devote time on a special meeting. Mm -hmm. And two, I think it's actually a really good practice for us to ask ourselves, does this deserve a special meeting? Well, that's when we had decided. Initially. And having decided that it did, I would rather stick to that than, mm -hmm. than invite the idea that we can cram big topics into 20 minutes, because no. we can't. I think we can do the town hall usage policy probably at a, at a regular meeting, but I think that we would honor the friends by devoting Okay. Um, uh, so maybe we could do it on the, what's the, so the 12th, so that would be the 19th, right? Uh, 19th would be a week later, correct? Okay, so you'll let us know. Yeah, I'll check the dates <laughs> with the friends and we will come back with the one or two suggestions either 19th or if that doesn't work, we'll provide some okay. other possible dates. Because we have people backed up. We got somebody that wants to have a wedding in August. Well, and that's what the friends have been discussing over the past you know? few days is that um, we've got, we've actually got a list of all the requests because yeah. you're not seeing them all. You're no, getting some of them. The office, the town office is getting some of them, but also David and Artie and Nancy are receiving requests. So Barbara has compiled them all right. into a single document. Yeah, I sent her the people that and have contacted me. Probably half a dozen people or groups who are interested in doing something upstairs yeah yeah and this is the season to do stuff when the weather's nice mm -hmm. we've up today not today where it's 90. <laughs> it's <just called> 90. <laughs> all right let's see what we got next we're going to do minutes we have katie can would you please do the honors of sharing the minutes yep thank you so much See if we can get through the majority of them. All right, shall we start back in April? Yep. Oh. I'm gonna come and sit around in the room here so I can see this. Yeah. There's a question here from Sharon. Who did we approve to sign it? I assume it was it was Denise, but yeah, yeah. we should capture that. Okay. I'll make a note to myself. Okay. Um highway update. I didn't have any issues with sharing yeah, changes. Fine. I don't remember. I just know I read them. <laughs> yeah, I read them all. And make comments. Yeah. Or review Sharon's comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Katie had had a question about whether the terms change. Okay. An answer. Yeah. It's not an edit. Right. Okay. Yep. Does it need to be edited in if if it's a question that came up in Denise's mind, whatever that? Was. No, it was in Kate. It was in Katie's mind. It's clarification of the because Katie the asked secretary. It. Ask for. Katie, oh, right, Katie right, asked yeah. a question. Yep, I remember. So I was talking, answering no, I get her that. question. And it's not a question that came up in the meeting. No. Yeah. I would move to approve with the edits. 
Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Next. All right, 419. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It was pretty straightforward on this one. Yeah. Right. And we did we answer Katie's question where she wanted us to fill in the blanks? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I make a motion to approve the April. What are they? Nineteen. Yes. Is it April nineteen minutes with edits and questions answered. Second. Anybody else? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. All right, April twenty sixth. Pretty sure I reviewed this. Oh, yep. It's just slow. Is the internet slow here, Cliff? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, we got two factors because we got Katie's internet and our internet. Okay. Mm -hmm. These questions answered. Chairman had some edits. Yeah, I think it was pretty straightforward. Oh, Katie, and this it's in here several several times. It wasn't Holland who met with us, it was Ruben Bennett. Got it. I yeah, corrected I, some I, of them, but I don't know if I cut them all. I'll double check those. Thanks. And we don't we, we should at least once put his last name, his yeah, his full name. I think it's at the beginning. Okay. It, yeah. Is it Katie? Can you double check? Yes, I just saw it. Yep. Okay. That's all. Okay. okay. Uh, that's our list. Move to approve the minutes of 426-21. The edits. Second. Um, I just want to note, I, um, well, never mind. Go ahead. Okay, are you ready vote. to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. I think this was the, uh, Katie, before we leave that, I just want to point something out. I think yeah. this, when I was looking at some later minutes, I was, I was, um, I don't know, prompted or tempted to go back through. And I, I, I think I did. I think it was this meeting or even the earlier in April meeting where we first talked about invasives mm. and hiring somebody for invasives. So I just want the board to remember that we started this conversation in April mm -hmm. and it was the- It was in May. It was the second meeting in May when Alfred told us that he hadn't gotten around to posting it. Yeah, I noticed something about that when I was reviewing minutes that we had asked him to repost yep. um, about getting somebody to mm -hmm. mow and he didn't do it. And we reminded him in a subsequent meeting and reminded him to do it, which he did. Right, yeah. that we started that conversation in April and yeah. it took four touches. Yeah, to make it happen. Okay, next. All right, <clears throat> May ten. Yeah, you got your answer to your question. Yes, thank you. Well, I answered your question. I don't know if you saw it, Sharon. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. Let me just look at it for Katie. Uh -huh. The deadline for this year has passed. And I know when you and I were working on stuff, it really wasn't that helpful. Um, because the data is so hard to... It's hard to sort. Yeah, it's hard to sort it. And it's like, I wish I could ask... I wish we would be the ones to ask the questions that are in the survey. 
Well, I, I hear you, and I still think if you don't contribute and participate, then, we, then we're not in a position to ask for the data. Yeah, we can get it. No, 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 but to, to make it better. I don't, that, that's all I'm saying, oh. it is like, we participate, we do our part, we contribute, but can't you guys do some process improvement to get better data? But we can, can certainly remember to do it next year. Right. That's what I think. We, yeah. should, we should have a, yeah, let's do it next year. Okay. That's it. Moving right along. Um, yeah, okay. I think we're good, Katie. Is there anything else on these? I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to this question about if if the motion included um, or if we just missed it in this motion, who's going to sign on behalf of the board? I mean, I know it happens all the time. Yeah, I don't remember if there was a motion or not, but I think I ended up signing it. Okay. Huh? Right. Yeah, I'm pretty, sure we, I'm pretty sure we did. Okay. Yeah. Okay, does anybody want to make a motion to approve the what, I'll, I first, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of May 10th? Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I abstain and was not present. Okay. All right, let's see. I think we're up to oh, 524. Oh. Uh-huh, okay. I think I had um, a comment. It, it's not the, it's not a creation. Can you go back up, Katie? No, that's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, yeah, I see. So it's not a creation, it's an adoption. And you're okay? No, I, I'm fine as long, yeah. Establish an ordinance adopt. I think it's important. I, I've been looking at some of our old um, ordinances and policies, and some it can be really hard to tell when the beginning is. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. that's well. There should be a history of the yeah. adoption process at the last on the last page of a, of an ordinance. Usually, right up on the front in the in the yeah. appellate, you put a start date and an end date if it's sunsetting. Right? Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think we're good. We can move on. So the, those should all say adopt, not establish. Yeah, we don't. You don't establish an ordinance; you adopt one. Okay. Definitely have that date of adoption right up front too, and then if it is a term, that should be there as well. Yeah, I think it's actually on the last page in this case. Okay, we've always done it. I mean, I mean school and other things. Oh. That way it's, that way you see it really quick. This is where, this yeah. is where, yeah. And this is, I think this is also where I noticed that we asked Alfred to repost the ad or something. I don't think I made a comment on it, but I noted it in my brain. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Oh, Sharon, I don't, there was no, we didn't have, there was no discussion on that. Yes, we did. I, I had said, I, what I wrote in there is exactly what I said that night, that we, I said I felt like it was premature to have somebody 
So Mark said, you know, is this like we're going to join us as a partner? We're going to have a liaison, you know, or something like that. And I said, premature, all those things I absolutely said. And that's the night that we appointed you and John as I remember, liaise, I remember as that. Liaisons. I remember that. And and to me, and I said all of those things because it, I I did. I said them because it matters to me. Could anybody else back me up that I said it? You can go watch the movie. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, did. That is the, the, the difference. I mean, does that make sense what I'm saying? And maybe you just didn't hear me say it that night. I didn't hear you say it that night, no. No. So, yeah. So, it's really important, though, that when you guys are participating, you are you are not members because the sec board isn't joining. You are. No, we're not a part of the group. We're, done, we're representing the town. Right. But, right. but it was pretty clear. <laughs> I, Denise, it's clear because I, I said I'm not, I would be premature to do that. This is what we are doing. That other thing is not what we are not doing. And sometimes we're not as clear as we should be about it. What I'm saying is I was very clear in my mind that that's how it was working. That I'm not saying it wasn't clear. What I'm saying is these are the minutes and it's important to me that the minutes capture that clarity and the clarity exists because I was the one who said it. Okay, that's fine. I'm just saying, I don't recall you saying it. Okay, but that's fine. The minutes can reflect whatever you want. They can only reflect what was actually said. All right, Katie, are you moving on? This sentence didn't, somehow it didn't read right to me. And I was trying to make it read differently. Mm -hmm. Reported that the board agreed to retro, we agreed to re retroactively compensate the staff, not just the, to represent the crew, to retroactively pay the crew. And I, I, I it, somehow this sentence just doesn't read right. We agreed to provide retroactive pay to the crew who are regular and full-time members. And I, I don't know how to make it read. That, that, I, we were retroactively paying them per compensation process, right? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Am I missing? Yeah, no, we, just, we gave them their, we, we retroactively, them. we retroactively, we gave them their pay that they didn't get from July one. That was due July 1, 21. When right. we were in negotiations, we didn't give them their increase. That's right. That's what I'm saying though, but it was pending kind of the Well, we, we gave it to them because the, 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 thing, the thing ended. Right, right. So, and I can't make it read right because if somebody were to look at that or we look at it later, it's like, hmm. So isn't it a board agreed to retroactive retroactively pay the crew. retroactive pay increases or yeah pay. or compensation increases however you want to say it pay is fine that's what everyone says that's what everybody says yeah that's the pay word. increases to um, to take out crew take out the to regular full time crew members. And how do we say though that it was for the time during which I think we need to be clear that it was from the during the time in which we were negotiating and now that negotiate and then negotiations right. added. Right. New, how sentence. Do we, new sentence. Yes. New sentence. During during the union negotiations. So where do we want the where do we want the new sentence? We want it after July 1, don't we? Uh yep. Borders in select board. Agree to write to um, where's July one? It's on the second next page. Um, maybe, the, yeah, for the period July one, pay increases for the period July one to June 30, 2021. No, 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 Katie. No, no. Retro committee. Pay increases, Katie. Retroactive yeah. increases for 
the period. I mean, this is too, the problem. The problem we're running into is too many prepositional phrases. But whatever. Uh -huh. The increase is um, for the period July 1, 2020 through it was to June, it was this fiscal year, 30, 2021, to regular full time crew members, period, during the union negotiation, the board. Was stayed uh, increases pending the result of union negotiations. Something like that is still, I just, because if we have all this stuff going on, if anybody looks at the minutes, I want it to be really clear. If, instead of stayed, maybe um, stayed, did, okay. Did not make, you know, did, stayed is what I said, but did I not just make. couldn't hear you. That's fine. Yeah, did not make. No, state is going to, people are going to get tripped on that. Just say did not make increases pending result, union, results of union negotiations. Right. And then how do we say that as a result, or maybe we don't have to say that when the new union negotiations fell apart, then the board gave them these retroactive increases. I don't know how to say it. I think that well, maybe the, we don't need to. I don't think we I have, think to. We have to. I think that saying anything more starts to sound like we're answering questions that aren't being posed in this context anyway. Mm -hmm. And, and it, I mean, it, would we want it to be any more clear? Agreed to retroactive pay increases for the period July 1 through June 30 to regular full time crew members who were employed by the town in that period. Yeah, okay, that works. Can you add that, Katie? After members who, yep. Yeah, thank you. Um, during, that, during that period. And it's, yeah. Yeah, during that period. Okay. Um, during the union negotiation, the board did not make increases pending results of the new negotiations. I, I don't That's know. good. I can't think of a way it could be. Yeah, that's, that. that's fine. That reads much better now than. I was looking at it. Okay, is there a motion to approve the minutes of? I already forgot the date. Twenty fourth. Five twenty four twenty one. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Do you want to say the you're uh, making a motion to approve them with changes as discussed? Yeah, we can. I just sure. Um, I make the motion to uh, adopt the. May 24th meeting minutes as and with it with with changes as noted. Okay. So, yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. You want to try to do one more? Yeah. All right. Um, I think we're up to June. Woohoo. June 6th. June 7th. Okay, hey, let's do it. Uh, so oh, that was our special meeting with the fire department. I don't know. Um, I don't think there was really much to change. Okay. We'll move to approve the minutes of the special meeting of June 7th, 2021. I'll second that. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Katie, I'm abstaining because I wasn't there. Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. One more. Sure. The next one, the 14th. Yeah. Well, that's when I was in the second I have not reviewed that one yet. You want to wait? Wait. Okay. We're, we're going to be done for tonight, Katie. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yay. That's a lot done. We got a lot done. Yeehaw. Okay. So just to recap a little bit, I'm going to do a special um, agenda 
for our meeting on Wednesday at four o'clock at the town garage. We're gonna, I'm gonna check with Jacob, see about an extra exit interview. And we're going to do the official signing of the memorandum contract. And the signing of the resignation, Jacob's resignation. Oh, that's right, in the letter. He wrote for him the resignation. Well, we could do that now if we're not gonna put anything in the letter about an exit interview. I, I'm, I'm fine with that actually. One last thing. Yeah, I think I'm going to ask uh, Pam Van Rayley about the art to see if we can get some kind of a decent. Kent Hill. Yeah. Kent Hill cover. Okay. And then uh, capital fund and equipment too. So we'll see about how we can possibly use that windfall to kind of mm -hmm. catch up our capital fund. And I, I don't think sustain. I. In my checking, you cannot use it to purchase equipment. Oh, you can. But you could double no, check. I don't mean. Oh, so can, I don't. What do you mean for the art fund? Are you talking? I mean the art funds. You can't purchase. You I'm can't use it to buy. Our, I'm talking about our budget windfall that we've got uh, that uh, that we were we we're, were running under budget. So I think what uh, Sandra was saying was to use. It's an opportunity for us to use the some of the windfall of savings this year in our capital fund, which is not our, but that's our budget. Right, no, I know that. So, so I'm, that, not, I'm, I'm not sure I'm clear on what you're saying. I was gonna see how we use that to actually kind of get us ahead a little bit in that capital fund. So oh, that's, okay. it's a reserve fund, yeah. right? So Would you do me a favor so I don't have to keep asking you every time I'm doing an agenda? Would you let me know when you wanna put something on yeah. about Kent Hill and about the East Dallas Stormwater? Will. Project. That's my oh yeah. Because okay. I keep I keep having to remember to ask. And you shouldn't. I will do it. So if I don't have to keep asking, you'll just let me know when. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Oh uh, yeah, I don't think they're still quite ready yet. So okay. I'm waiting for. Them. All right. So sadly, this is Cliff's last meeting. Yes, Cliff. Yeah. It has no, been Wednesday. Well, it's his last. Well, as okay, then we won't do it today. All right. No, um, I may have. In review at that time, I'm waiting for confirmation back, so I may not be able to be there. Oh, oh, so we should see things as I go home now. What happened to the yeah, anyways? It's been a real honor and a pleasure to serve with you. You have incredible knowledge and patience, or patience than I'll ever have. Um, and it's just, I you'll be very much missed. But you'll still be around because we're still going to call you for technical stuff and 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 things and talents that you brought to us. But thank you. Yeah, yeah, very. Impressive. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty remarkable when you think when we had an opening about three years ago. Yep. And you came in. None of us knew you. But we did it on field sharing. Remember? And uh, no, I would say we didn't do it on field. I Some think of it was. We were, no, it was that Cliff was incredibly well prepared. Cliff yeah. was very well prepared. And um, <coughs> and you came in prepared for a, you know, I don't know. You, you, you took, my recollection is that you, you, you presented yourself in a way that was, I, you know, ready to serve, very articulate, um, and, and I don't know, prepared is, prepared is the word I keep coming back to, probably a better one, but, it, but, it, but it is kind of interesting to think that we didn't know you, you didn't know any of us, I believe, at that time. That's true. That's true. And now look where we are. <laughs> well, I, and I agree. I mean, I think we probably did look at your preparation and all that, but some of it was kind of like, how's, how's this person going to fit in? You know, some of that is was taken into consideration, and you fit in magnificently. Thank you. And your town is very lucky to have you in service that you've already done, and hopefully things going forward. We're very fortunate to have you and Elizabeth join us in Cal's. Thank you. <coughs> um, great support from the board great. as I came up to speed on things. And uh, thank you to the town at large for having faith in me and voting for me to be in this position. 
it's interesting. It's kind of a full circle thing for me because the first meeting, regular select board meeting that I attended as a member of the select board was the last regular select, select board meeting to take place in this building. Is that true? Because then they wow. started renovating. That's right. And so tonight, wow. the it's first kind of regular select board meeting to take place in the renovated town hall is now my last meeting. So Isn't that it is weird? a bit of a full circle. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Interesting. So, um, it has been uh, an honor and a privilege. It sounds cliche, but it is absolutely true. And uh, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. We thank you. We need to thank you. I mean, you've helped the town so much with your skills and your talent and your thoughtful approach to things. So, yeah, we'll, well be very much missed. And you have not not what was on anybody's mind when we when we asked you to join us, but you have demonstrated that you don't have to be a lifelong Vermonter or a you know have a lot of years in Callis to find the right place for you yourself and make a contribution right away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so with that, was is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank, Thank you all for sticking with us all the way through the duration of the All the way through the